Yeah. It would have been different. It would have been different. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the HWMF Podcast. I am your host, Seth Rose, here with my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Good morning. And in the podcast studio this morning, we have the number one in our hearts, number 10 <laughs> in, the, in the standings for Bellator, Cody Law. I'm excited for you to be here, my friend. Me too. Very happy. Good way to start. You are, num- you are ranked number 10. In Bellator standings right now at 145 pounds. Yep. How's that feel? Feels good. You know, I uh, my mom was talking to me about it last night. Actually, how she remembers whenever I was still like a little kid, I would look up the state or not even state district rankings for wrestling, like every other night, wishing that I would be on them because I was so bad I wasn't even close to district district top ten or whatever the rankings were. And then the first time that I ever was ranked, it was like the craziest thing ever. And then. To see to go from that to eventually being ranked in the state to being ranked in the college nationals to now this is my first time ever being ranked in the world. It's pretty you, cool. You are ranked number ten in the world in Bellator for yeah. one hundred forty five pounds. Yeah. That is whenever you posted that last night, I was I was like, This is fucking yeah. insane. This is something that I mean, you've talked about it for what? What's it been now? We've been Probably almost it's two years. About two years? Is yeah. It been two years? Year Maybe and a half. A year? A year and a half. Year and yeah, a half, year and a half, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. were you were three and three and zero, oh, or Here's two and zero. Oh. I was one and zero oh when I started with you guys, right? Really? Or two and zero, oh, two and zero oh because oh. Uh, oh. I the three talked and oh to you guys before my first fight. Yeah, but I was. Yep. I had another fight so close I didn't get to meet you guys until like New Year's. So two and zero. Oh. Mm-hmm. My first fight together was a three, the third fight. This yep. is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm pumped. Me too. It's pretty cool because yesterday you were, or was it yesterday or the two days ago? I wasn't here with you guys yesterday, right? Monday. Monday. Tuesday. Monday. Today's Wednesday. Tuesday, or Monday. Oh, what what flew is. by. You were uh, yeah. so with this last fight, you uh, you knocked out your opponent yeah. in one minute and seventeen seconds. Yeah. And whenever you were first on the podcast, we had a conversation with you about things that you do, your sleep, your t- your habits, your the, all the things that you do for your fights. <clears throat> and uh, the one thing that you do is you will write down like what you do, uh, what you plan on doing to that person, like knock them out. Yeah. TKO, uh, submission, you were talking about how to finish a fight. Pretty sure we, we had that discussion on here. I think or we did. Or yeah. it was just us. Or it was just out. us shooting the shit one yeah. day, drinking bourbons. Yeah. But you were talking about how you do those things. In this one, you actually wrote down yeah. the outcome of the fight. And then it actually happened. You yeah. wrote down knockout in one minute and 17 seconds. Yeah. And then you knocked out this opponent in one minute and 17 seconds. Yeah. That's like some. Yeah, black magic. But then, uh, so we were all amazed, and apparently the whole entire MMA community was smoked. You went on the Ariel Hawani show, yeah. which was super cool. You were in front of the bourbon wall here that people on the comments, they were commenting yeah. like, that's a green screen. That's yeah. bullshit. Yeah. And then they were saying all these different things, and we're in, we're in Lids's office laughing like, okay, this yeah. is pretty funny. Why don't you stop in? Jay, <laughs> Jay lighting it perfectly made it look like a green screen. Yep. Half the, half the messages I got after that were... <clears throat> about that <laughs> that's about like dude so half were like oh my god so cool you're on Ariel Hawani the other half were like yo where was that <laughs> is that your place or what is that <laughs> but um it was cool I mean since we know you we know all your tendencies we know we talk to Tristan all the time about everything that you do and how you prepare for fights and all this mm. and then for this to actually happen yeah. is fucking wild yeah it's weird um Ariel said on, whenever I was interviewing him, he was like, you seem a little bit like nonchalant about this. this sh- why, you know, why are you not more surprised? But, and I hadn't thought about that, but now, now since he said that, I've been thinking, I guess I'm just, I'm so used to things like this happening that it is fucking crazy, but it's also like not that crazy to me now. I've seen it so much. So, and in, in with you, uh, like whenever we first talked to you on the first episode that we had you on here, you were talking about how you weren't good at wrestling. Oh, yeah. And how you were determined and you had things in your head about what you wanted to accomplish. Mm. And now that you're getting, you're on this professional level and you're on a winning streak here, six wins in a row, literally climbing the ranks, you're number 10, Mm. 145 in Bellator. Like, whenever people uh, talk about, like, oh, these, these, you should shoot for the moon. Like, whenever you're coming up, everybody's like, you should do a good job. Like, don't sell yourself short. Well, you haven't. Yeah. And then whenever, now that you're succeeding at these things, people, all of a sudden, you get all the trolls out of the woodwork. <clears throat> you know, the people calling bullshit. Or yeah. you get those things happening. Are you noticing any negative comments about these things occurring? Yeah. Are you? For sure, yeah. But 
I don't care, you know, it's that's kind of exciting too. You know, if if people didn't care they wouldn't say anything. If people care, that's that's a good sign, you know. It means I'm doing something right. Plenty yeah. plenty of people, of course, everyone was like, Yeah, right. You know, oh, that's what I mean. I yeah. saw I saw a lot of people saying that's yeah. bullshit. There's no way you photoshopped Dude, it. I got really good proof. I I have a video on my phone that somebody who was with my manager Abe, I forget the guy's name, Maurice maybe, was was sitting cage side with Abe. And he took a video of me fighting. So you, it's from cage side. And he just so happened to start it right as I was about to finish the guy. So I'm finishing the guy. As soon as I finish him, he pans over to Abe and Abe is yelling. He's like, 117, 117. He called that right there live in the moment. You know? Pretty cool. So it's like, okay, we definitely, how, how do we plan that? No. You know, it didn't have a notebook there <clears throat> writing that down afterwards. Yeah, and, and, and to be honest, that seems like kind of like something that, I don't know, I wouldn't, knowing you, I wouldn't imagine yeah. you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to write this down like after the fight and then I'm going to post it. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's no, going to be how I'm yeah. going to get on the Ariel Hawani yeah. show. Right. Yeah, like it's crazy. It's like a plan like Ariel Hawani is going to be like, yeah, like you should plan this out so you can come on the show. Dude, I didn't, like, think, as an up and be, I didn't think it was even going to be a big deal. Like Abe had yelled to me through the cage that I was right, that it was 117. And I was like, oh, wow, nice. And then I was, that was it. Until I got my phone and I saw like that Ariel had tweeted about it and then all this, all these people were tweeting and I was like, holy shit. That'd be like me saying I'm going to fucking win the show straight first and then I go to the show and I win straight first at a competition. Or you being like, I'm going to finish this Iron Man in nine hours and 38 minutes. Yep. And then you go finish in nine hours and 38 fucking minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, you can almost, but with fighting, I understand it's a little different, but it's like, yeah. it's something very difficult to. The, the funniest comments I've seen are the people who are, people are writing, okay, well, he, was, he wasn't fighting a good guy, so he just probably just counted down in his head and finished him <laughs> when he knew it was one. You, you know how ridiculous that is? How, Dude. even if you're fighting a bad guy, it's still dangerous. You're still like, super locked in like i have i don't even really remember fighting you know no, I, I can imagine you lose just, i can imagine you lose track of the time per round i right? thought like i you're, was you're almost at the end it. of the round yeah right. that's really I, dude when i'm looking so i'm i'm trying to be more patient when i fight because in the first minute or two minutes guys are crazy they're swinging it's a whirlwind adrenaline up it's a washing machine in there right if i go in to throw a one two i could get clipped just because a guy's throwing crazy stuff you know he's mm -hmm. anxious he's jittery um, so me and Mike have been talking about, let's be patient, be patient, like draw things out of guys. And it was only 30 seconds before I started taking, shooting shots. But in my head in the fight, I was like, okay, I've been, I've been standing around for like two minutes now, I think probably. It feels so like, really, like time is moving so slow that I felt like 30 seconds was two minutes. So I was like, okay, I got to go. And then I started going, finished the fight, whatever. And then when I watched it, I was like, holy shit, that was only 30 seconds of fainting at best before we started exchanging. You know, right. so the the ability to count down, the best fighter in the world could fight a terrible fighter. I don't think you could count down the exact moment you're gonna finish a guy. Yeah, it's like impossible. That's more impossible than just happening to predict. I, I mean, that's I mean, that's the, that's the what is it the the, the law of relativity. Law of attraction. That, yeah, like just trying to figure it, like uh, thinking like, oh, I've been doing this for five seconds and it's actually oh, been five minutes. Yeah. Oh, it's been I've been doing this for five minutes and actually been five seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it's yeah. those things. And I would imagine whenever you're in, I, I mean, I haven't been in, never been in a cage. Yeah. I've never even been in that scenario. Like whenever you're in a fight, you're like, yeah, we were rolling around for like 30, 40 seconds. No, you were rolling around for like 10 seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Those yeah. are things that are hard to judge. And I mean, that's part of being an elite fighter, I would imagine, is being able to gauge time yeah. and understand the ring, which is probably a craft in its own. It's experience. So <laughs> the fact that you were like, yeah, it's been a minute. I'm going to knock him out now. That motherfucker was swinging. Yeah. He came out swinging hard. That's the most dangerous part of the fight, I think, is the first minute or two. Oh, because, really? Yeah, because they're just, uh, especially s certain guys... Um, they're just going to swing, right? They're, they're, because they they're not pussies. Coming. Yeah, they're in there to fight. They want to win, too. You know, this is the biggest, biggest opportunity of each other's lives here. And, uh, that first minute, guys are real have nervous energy, right? They're just swinging from weird angles, from the hip, whatever, you know. But as the fight, once things settle in, you've had a couple exchanges, then things get more standard, you know, more yeah. predictable. But that first minute or two, Mike always calls it a washing machine. Cause, and it's what it's like, you know, you get hit with things, you're like, where did that come it, from? It looked like it because, all that I saw with you, because I didn't even watch the fight. We were having our gymnastics meet oh, here, man. home meet, and yeah. I got, uh, I literally got in the truck. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to open everything up now. We just moved all the equipment back, open it up, and Shane posted, like, 
uh, what Bellator posted. I'm like, motherfucker, it's literally seven. It was like seven twenty. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. So we went. I went back and was watching it all. And I'm like, you, you look so, like anything he threw, you like had a counter for it. Like just yeah. movement, how quick you were, and dude was not throwing slow punches either. Yeah. So it was pretty cool to see you sharp on your game. It's a weird thing. It's like uh, I don't remember doing pretty much any of that stuff. I remember throwing the head kick. That was in my head. But, like, the left hook that I landed to drop him, like, the second time maybe, don't remember that at all. It was pretty funny to see him just, con like, he got hit. Yeah. Dropped to his knee, popped right back up, yeah. went back after you. I'm like, if you're in a fight and somebody's, you're hitting somebody and they're continuing to come at you, pretty intense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really fun, man. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy to see it, you know, because I've always wanted to be a good striker. I've always wanted to go to knock people out. And it was always a question, like, will I be? Because I'm a wrestler, you know? Yeah. So to be able to go back and watch it and see, like, a real knockout, I'm, I was very happy. And it's just uh, practice, you know? In there, I'm not thinking, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. It's just straight reaction from doing it so many times. Mm -hmm. It's all so instinct. Much instinct. Instinct, yeah. It's because, literally Like, instinct. what I thought of was when uh, Seth just said that you hit him with the left hook and you dropped him and you got back up, I saw a Matt uh, Layshock post yeah. about you – hit him with the left, and then you squared him off to hit him with your right. Yeah. And that's just instinct. He and then you watched it, and you saw it. And yeah. Yeah, Matt was like, dude, what you did there, the way you did this, 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 and this was like perfect, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, mm -hmm. that wasn't, like, intentional. I just moved that way from instinct now. From doing reps in the gym, you just, yeah. boom, you're programmed. Is that mm -hmm. not crazy fighting? Yeah. Like, you know how whenever you're doing something during your training, you're just like, yeah, this is just how I train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, me with bodybuilding it's just yeah this is just how i do curls or this is what i've noticed to be the best i don't even think about it anymore it's just secondhand nature yep to actually yeah. go in and say that that's secondhand nature in a fight like that's what's what's always scary yeah. about fighting somebody in a bar or anything like that that you look at and they're like their yeah. first thing is like literally to fuck you up mm -hmm. yeah like first instinct instinct snap of the fingers that's in their yeah. head they didn't even think about it they just did it mm -hmm. yeah well like yeah like one of the <clears throat> excuse me one of like the bigger problems i had with like either like big training sessions or like if I was at a race or I was training with other people that are like either pushing me or have the same uh, like pacing, mm. I tend to always settle into what they're doing. Like I settle into their pace. I don't ever just stay on my own pace. And it took like the last two and a half years and like actually getting some races under my belt for me to just have that instinct to just keep going at my pace. Cause like when you come up on someone <clears throat> Like, yeah, your initial instinct is like, oh, I want to pass them. But then, like, you notice, like, you could actually chime in on their pace and, like, get in sync with them. And, like, you settle in and, like, you almost start to, like, pull your effort back. Mm. Where, like, now, like, my instinct is to, like, no, I need to surpass them, stay ahead of them. Literally have and, blinders on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stick to your, your plan, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. That's got to be. I mean, that's what that's what the whole Mike Tyson thing is. Everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah. yeah. Like in yours, in bodybuilding, in yours, in so many sports, nobody's getting punched. Mm -mm. Nobody's getting hit except in yeah. fighting. So it's like you have a great plan. Like you have yeah. a plan like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, wait for the washing machine and understand all that. Yeah. But it's like all of a sudden, say you get cracked in the face. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all that shit goes out the fucking window. Yep. And you're like, okay, this is what I have to do. So that's yeah. one of those things that's, I'd imagine, is difficult, strategic, all those things in fighting. I think that's why it's so important to have that programming, right? Um, if things don't go to plan, what's your fallback? What is your default setting? How are you going to react without thinking, without having to go through the plan, you know? And if you're programmed to just fight and react and move your head and land punches and do the right things and you, you're going to be okay, right? Even as well as when you get tired. When you're tired, man, what do you do? You go back to what you what you're most comfortable with. Yep. But if you don't if what you're most comfortable with isn't good, man, you're in trouble. It's like uh, what's that movie with Jackie Moon, Will Ferrell? Oh, the basketball movie. Yeah, oh. Tropic or uh <laughs> damn it. But he was like he's yeah. like this is the play that we're going to run whenever you're ready to puke. <laughs> you or you're going to run yeah. whenever we're dead tired. You're never going to forget it. It's, I mean, that's it's it's funny in the movie and it's a joke, but that literally yeah. is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when you're tired and exhausted and don't know what to do, if you're getting punched in the face, it's like yeah, you have to have something solid to go back to. Yeah, whatever uh, you were gonna say, I, I was just I was just gonna say like like with the, your whole prediction that you had, 
and the way I look at what I do and like, like I examine, like you examine your opponent weeks in advance, Mm -hmm. you study them, you, you understand who they are. I look at race courses. I understand what the course is going to look like. I start to visualize months in advance of like how, like I've never even been to Galveston. But in my head, I already think I know how, what the water looks like. I know what the bike course looks like. I know what the run course looks like. Yeah. I don't actually, but I envision and yeah. keep running it through my head every single training session. Do you feel like like you predicting that time? Like, did you envision that? Like, did you visualize that type of finish? Like, did you yeah. have that? Yeah, not that exact exchange, but I had yeah. in my head like uh, two different scenarios that I felt was going to be the way I finished them and I felt they were going to happen early. Yeah. And uh, I visualize it so many times. Yeah. These fights I visualize so often that by the time I actually get in there, I'm not nervous at all. Yeah. Because I've gotten all the nerves out. Like I've run through the fight so many times. The first visualization, I feel the butterflies. Mm-hmm. But you do it so many times that by the time I actually get there, I'm like, oh, this has already happened. Like, that, times. It, yeah. It, it's crazy because it's so popular on social media. You know what I mean? Like Kai Green, whenever he would talk about... Uh, he would talk about how he was visualizing and he was so visual he was so into the visualizations yeah. of his of winning of competing of his his routines and the vibe and the feel he created those things and mm-hmm. he was an entertainer yeah and like it he was doing that 10 years ago yeah 12 years ago and people yeah. were like yeah it's kind of weird he's always into this thought process thoughts become things and that was his thing and people would fuck with him and he's a weird cat to begin with but then, like, now, like, I remember whenever I was turning pro, I imagined getting my arm raised. Yeah. I imagined winning. I imagined all these things. Yeah. And they didn't plan out the way you imagined, but they occurred. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think that as you're training for something intense, you do, you have to do those things. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what are you doing? Yeah. And I think yeah. the people that criticize the types, these types of things actually don't ever visualize anything incredible happening for themselves. Or they do, and then they just put in half the work. You mean like, oh, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to win. Or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And then like halfway through their training, they're like, this is way harder than I thought. I think I'd rather be normal. I think they're scared. Th- th- right? Yeah, they're scared. Yeah, they're scared of the commitment though, or the mm-hmm. the possibility that, wow, I could get anything I want if I put in this this effort towards it. Or know? even scared to write down one minute and, ele- and 17 seconds and then you get fucking knocked out at one minute yeah. and 17 seconds. Mm-hmm. They yeah. couldn't even put that in there. Right. Absolutely. They, they're scared to write that down because they're like, well, I won't write it down because what happens if I get my ass kicked? I feel that way sometimes even with the little things I write down. Every morning I write down things that I want to happen, and sometimes I write them down and I'm like, a little voice in the back of my head's like, what if this doesn't happen? It's going to take away from your belief in these things, you know what I mean? That that you can manifest these well, things. Well, that's the same, same thing you just posted this morning with the Denzel clip. Yep. Like, I didn't you know, see that. Whenever it, it's this uh, clip where Denzel, he's doing like, a, he's speaking at like a... Uh, it was like a college graduation mm. and like his his wife sent him this quote it was literally like the day before he was about to go do this uh speech and it said if you want something you've never had you must be willing to do something you've never done mm. and like he goes off on this whole tangent like with um like your actual potential versus like like what you think in the moment and how many people leave that potential on the table how like they yeah. leave all their potential like they they can think about it but they never actually execute or go after it and in and they he brought up he's like imagine on your deathbed mm. all of those feelings and all of that potential was there to like mourn and watch you get lowered into the ground yeah and it's like fuck dude like yeah i i want to completely completely remove that from happening by yeah. going after it and yeah. it was just such like the way he said it and the way if you watch the clip on my instagram it's fucking it's it's the best it is the best description or vibe you can get from woulda coulda shoulda yeah right. yeah right. that right. concept is so true in life and every yeah. time you talk to like a an, an older wiser person mm-hmm. they always say kid go travel the world before you settle down go travel mm-hmm. before you do this do this. Yeah. Hey, watch out for this. Hey, kid, you got the shit. Put 100% effort into it. Don't yeah. you fucking stop. Mm-hmm. Like all those things that we heard as young young men, yeah. teenagers, young kids, preteens, all these things. Like 
I mean, that's why, I mean, you're living it as a grown man, swinging for the fences with Iron Men. Yeah. You're doing it right now in your life, swinging for the fences, <laughs> literally in fighting. Mm -hmm. Ranked top 10 in Bellator. It's huge. There's a lot of people, and a lot of people that criticize aren't, are the people that, uh, that are afraid to go after those things themselves yeah. or have something literally blocking themselves mentally mm -hmm. that they're not willing to admit that's what's blocking them. Yeah. Something in their past, something in their head. And that's why it's like, you know, we're always like, oh, fuck the trolls or like, you know, they're going through something hard. And it's mm -hmm. it's it's a wild scenario because they have defense mechanisms in themselves from stopping them from being great because Bob yeah. was fat as fuck. Now Bob's fit as fuck. Mm. You literally sucked at wrestling in high school, then became a national champ. And now you're ranked top 10. Like these are things that are incredible feats. But if you would have said this back then, people would say you're crazy. They did. Yeah. I, yeah. So many people tell me. They were told, I told Bob, I'm like, we would joke about him being buoyant in the water. And I'm like, yeah. you're not buoyant. And yeah. then it's, all right, dickhead. Yeah. Sure, I'm not buoyant. Fuck you. I'm going to run marathons. Excuse me, you're doing what? You bought a yeah. bike, Bob? You bought a bike, huh? All right, cool. Like, hey, yeah. Bob just bought a bike. I think it's getting pretty serious. Bob ran three miles. Bob ran 10 miles. Bob yeah. just bought a bike. Like, no matter if it was me fucking with him or joking about it, and there's a point in him that he's looking at me saying, remember the time that you laughed about me about being buoyant? How's that sitting, Seth? Yeah. Those are things that I believe that everybody should have in them. Yeah. They should utilize those things, whether they're good or bad, indifferent or anything, to fuel themselves. Because mm -hmm. whenever you see someone succeed, even if you, even if I was wrong, even if I was right, whatever it may be, I want to see people do some really wild shit because it creates, I mean, there's people that follow you now that are doing the same things like, oh, I literally watched him do this so I can do it too. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and. But two types of people, I feel like there's people that will, that will see that and be inspired by it and will be excited about it. And there's people that will be haters, mm -hmm. right? Quote unquote haters, because they, they are afraid to take that chance too to put themselves out there. That's the same people that say, uh, your goals are crazy. There's people that say, be realistic. Like my least favorite line of all time. You know how many people have said that to you? Uh, all, all my life. You know, we had, uh, I won't say his name, but you know who I'm talking yeah. about. Liz, yeah. with us, <laughs> Here it comes, yeah. these two. With, uh, yeah. with our entire lives, but he would tell our mother, like, come on, like, Cody's not going to be a state champion. Cody's not yeah. going to do that. Then Cody goes to Penn State and wants to wrestle in college. He's not going to do anything. And then he becomes national champion. And then when we'd say, Cody's going to make millions of dollars someday. Come on. How many fighters make millions of dollars? It's, you know, like, that's just how it is. And that person that said that is living in the slums. So that's just, like, how it is. Those type of people aren't going to do anything. The people that did have his back the whole time, I mean, they're just super passionate about seeing people succeed. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it was always be realistic, right? Hey, uh, Cody, come on. I, I want to be state champion. Oh, come on, it would just be nice if you could place, you know? I hate that mentality because if you, if, you, if you don't aim for first, right? Let's say, oh, I would just like to be fifth. Fifth would be amazing. I'd be a place winner. What if you get it? Are you really happy you got no. fifth? No, you, then you're like, shit, I could have gotten first, you know? But if you aim, aim for first and you come up third, well, you got something to work for it. You know what I mean? But, but but you can still be, no matter what occurs at that point, you can still be proud because yeah, everyone, I think in the beginning, it, it, <clears throat> Priscilla said, uh, how did he put it? He said, nobody will believe, nobody will believe in you until you do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's a lot of people that do, that are excited for you because yeah. here in Western PA, like, you know, we're not Hollywood, we're not Florida, we're not yeah. Texas, we're not anything yeah. like that. But it's, so whenever we see people succeed, yeah. I mean, you're a local dude, we're a local yeah. company, like. Sponsoring title title sponsor of the Mr. Pittsburgh show, like it's a tight gr yeah. group of people that really like cool shit happening in our mm -hmm. little area of the United States. So, I mean, I think there are a lot of people, like he said, that are passionate for whenever they see a succeed. So if you do go shoot for the moon and you're like, man, third place, dude, pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Really proud of you. It's exciting. People posting third place at this or that. Yeah. It's exciting. But then whenever you do succeed and win first, people go fucking bat shit crazy. Yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. You're ranked top ten. Yeah, yeah, but it's a big deal. But it's also like, okay, ranked top ten. But I was like, okay, this is cool. But <laughs> what is number ten though? It's, you don't get anything for being number ten. You get nothing. You get your name on a on a little graphic. You know, number one is what you're aiming for. You know, and so 
I even remember I mean, a guy. And, that, and that's the big difference in mindset right there, dude. Yeah. That, that might be enough for a, a lot of people. That's the thing. You know what I mean? They see number 10, they're like, fuck yeah, I yeah. made it. This is my shit. This is where I'm going to be. I'm content here. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I fight the same caliber of people the rest of my life. This is it. I got the notoriety. And you know what they do? They, the foot comes off the gas. Yes. And they go downhill. Yep. Right? I feel like that about with like when I, uh, wrestling is a good example for me. Whenever I see guys who just want to be a place winner, just want to be an All-American, then they win that, that match, that round to get into the All-American, and they drop down and get eighth place because they, they did it. They are an All-American. But now they just lost and went down to eighth when they could have been third or they could have been first. Mm -hmm. They have it in them, you know. And so guys will get into the top ten and then take their foot off the gas because, well, I'm good now. I'm top ten. And then, I mean, you can be good enough to be top ten, and everyone's always moving up. You, you know you got what I mean? a target you on your keep back working, now. you're going to drop below again. Yep. And now you're the guy who was and aren't, isn't anymore, mm -hmm. you know. And that's that's worse than anything. It's crazy that you're so calm, like very, uh, very uh, well thought out with everything you want to do, and you're super calm. So it's it's you know I don't know even whenever you, whenever people meet you and talk about it, they're like, dude, he's a real guy. He's calm. He's cool. He's collected. It's not every time you see a fighter that's like that, you know. So now that you're now that you went on the Ariel Hawani show, uh, people are they're like, man, this is wild. It's a great like wave of publicity here. Like the question is, is for me, and I think I know the answer to this, like you're top 10. Mm -hmm. You're going to continue to fight. I'm imagining you're going to start getting some serious opponents in Bellator. Um, your M.O. is going to continue to be. Um, the clean cut silent killer, like you know how like uh, Conor McGregor has his his mouthy way, Colby Covington, yeah, yeah. all that. Like, yeah. like how do you see your image continuing through this? Uh, organic, yeah. Just be me. I, I like being myself, dude. It's such a stressor to pretend to be something you're not, or to even accentuate your own features. You know, I guess I maybe would do that a little bit more. Like you just put yourself out there more. But I like being myself because I feel like you guys know me for example if you see me doing something that's not me I feel like I'm being fake and you guys are going to see that and be like this guy what is this this is not who he is I don't like that the people that I care about that I'm close to I want them to know that I'm I'm going to be me all the time you know so and I think that it, it works like if you're yourself I think people usually like it yeah you know mm -hmm. but you can see clearly like Colby for example is clearly a WWE character yes and I hate it I feel like it's just the the most gross and I watch him uncomfortable. I'm like, dude, he's gotta he's gotta be so stressed out all the time to put on that act. Mm -hmm. You know? I could never want to do that. It's weird. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. I think that you're creating your own MO right now by like naming the time that you finish somebody. Yeah. You're being you're being very humble about it, but also to have a set of balls to be able to write something down like that and then post it. People are like, fuck yeah. It's you're a very confident, yeah. very humble, uh, silent killer is how I look at it. And you like to dress nice, too. Yeah, it puts pressure on me, you know, <laughs> uh, because now I feel like I have to work way harder. You know, I need to get back to Florida right away because now I'm number 10 and now there's more attention. And if I go on to fight better guys and I start winning by decision, that doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. I need to finish better guys, too, you know. So but it's not pressure in a bad way. It's, it's motivating. How old are you? I'll be 27 in like two weeks. The 24th? What's today? Uh, Not even one week. Yeah. Next weekend. Next Thursday. Did you yeah. see his watch? 27. No. Got a rolly. I did it. Where'd you about buy it at? Uh, Sorry, that I, yeah, I just no, jumped yeah, right I, into I, it. So <laughs> everybody, like, uh, the reason I'm asking this, it was a lead into yeah, Cody yeah. is, oh uh, God, I, I mean, that. we talked about it, I think, about yeah. it, it, your fascination for watches. Can yeah. I run to the bathroom really quick while yeah. you're talking yeah. about yeah. watches yeah. really quick? Yeah. He's still drinking two gallons of water a day, pissing his pants. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking the other day about, like, how, like, the, the, the weight cuts and all these things, and he was saying how he, uh, he's like, I couldn't go to Batman, the Batman, because, like... I was drinking two gallons of water a day. I piss every 15 oh, yeah. minutes. You'd miss so much of the fucking movie. I'm like, bro, yeah. you are 150 pounds drinking two gallons of water a day. You are pissing all the time. He's like, it was out of control. Yeah. He's like, I couldn't take a 30 minute, uh, 30 minute drive. Couldn't do it. I'm like bodybuilding stuff. <laughs> yeah. But he, uh, but for everybody, uh, Cody, uh, it loves dressing 
very nice. That's like, you know how if, if I go anywhere, I'm like boots, jeans, maybe a sport jacket if I'm dressing up with a T-shirt under it, yeah. maybe a button down or something like that. Mm-hmm. Cody is, I'd like to wear a $5,000 suit. Yeah. Like it's, a, it's, it's an image thing. Yeah. And I think being in fighting, that's like, I think you have to have that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, if, I was, if, if, if I was doing that, you need to create like not a character or a fakeness of you, but really accentuate who you are, who you want to be. Yeah. Right? I think it's a standard for yourself. Yeah, I think like it's you have a very, to create something for yourself. I think it's a huge professional like instinct to want to do that. Like if I if I'm if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to like a com- news conference and they're talking about me yeah. and or, or what we're about to do Bro, I want to look like I'm coming here for business. This is business. Or, yeah. or, or, yeah, like, or how you want to present yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, like, if you're an oppressor and they're talking about you, do you want to be in your tank top, gym clothes, like, just finished? Or do you want to get cleaned up and say, this is who I am? Mm-hmm. Like, your character of yourself. Because I think when you're in the limelight, you need to make sure that you have this, like, uh, I hate using these things like a persona, mm-hmm. but like your actual you. Mm-hmm. Like if I go out there like, uh, okay, we'll name people. Like um, what's his – he was a quarterback of the Chargers. Drew Brees. No, Philip Rivers. 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 How he'd come out with the bolo tie, oh, like fast. the sport jacket, yeah. all that. He'd come out like there he is. Mm-hmm. Like that's how he dresses. This is how he looks. Cam Newton. Everybody, he's always in the news for his fa- – but he's fashionable. This is how he is. Everybody talked about it. That was his persona. Mm-hmm. Whenever the basketball players are walking in, football players walking into the stadiums, they it is now a showing of what they look like. Mm-hmm. Whenever then you get Ryan Fitzpatrick come out, fucking T-shirt, all his buddies' chains and everything with the sunglasses, like, there it is. Everybody yeah. was always ready. So it's not that uh, that's like a fakeness about them. That's who they are. That's how they want to be perceived. That's how they want to look. That's like what I was getting at. And with him, he's a huge watch guy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you just watch yourself. Your my first Rolex. Yeah, it's so pretty I, cool. I went to uh, Mayors. It's a watch store in Florida. Okay. Um, like twenty minutes from me. Yeah. And uh, I went a year ago. I, I I always go in there, right? All the time. And I always like, oh, can I look at the watches? And I, I knew in the back of my head, they're like, oh, this guy again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's not buying look. shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, they start to doubt you whenever they stop like swarming you and you walk in. So finally, one day, like I was in there with my mom a year ago. I wanted this exact watch, and so I was. She was like, kind of coaxing me into buying a watch, and I was trying them on again. And I was like, listen, I want to get these, but I really want this Rolex that that is like really hard to get. And she's like, okay, well, what is it? I can write it down for you and put you on a wait list because they're like a year wait list or whatever. So I told her, I was like, I want the date just 41. I want this kind of bracelet. I want this fluted bezel. I want Roman numeral dial, all these different things. Right. And she's like, okay, she writes it all down. Call you in a year probably. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, perfect. Like, uh, that's great. And I was in practice one day, like back in February and I come to my phone at the end of the wrestling practice, and I have like five missed calls, all these text messages from this number. And they're like, your Rolex is here. You have to come in today. Like, if you want it, you have to buy it within the next two days or else it gets passed on to the next person. And I'm like, holy shit, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to buy this right <laughs> this now? This is it. This is my time. So, of course, I call Bob's my... like, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Well, I'll be right there. <laughs> I'm freaking out because I'm like, I want it so bad, but I'm also like, am I making a bad decision? I always, I'm weird with like money. Yeah. No matter how much I have, I always feel like the buy. Especially for something like that. Everybody would be. Yeah. I'm thinking, Except Bob. Am I doing something stupid? <laughs> I would. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd feel that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, naturally, I call my mom first, who is like the one person who will say yes, for sure. Um, and she's like, Cody, yes, buy it right now. Of course. <laughs> Even if I had like just enough money to buy it and nothing more, she would be like, yes, do it. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no concept of saving. Yeah. With her. But, uh, <laughs> I called my, I called my buddy who is, uh, he's one of my sponsors, Mitch Kovacic from mm-hmm. Kovacic Insurance. He's a big Rolex guy and stuff. Oh, I nice. called him and told him about it. And he was like, how much did they ask it? And I told him, he's like, dude, that's retail price. He's like that, that's impossible nowadays. I was like, really? He's like, yes. He's like, if you don't, if you don't buy it, he told me. He's like, you should buy it. If you don't buy it, buy it, and I'll and I'll give you money for it. I'll pay, I'll buy it off you. So I was like, oh okay. really? So now I felt very secure. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna buy this, yeah. no matter what, because even if I decide, okay, I made a bad decision, I can sell it to Mitch, and, and he'll be really happy to have it. Yeah. Well, I got it for retail, and I looked it up online. What I could, if you wanted to buy it, the aftermarket, right? So there's authorized dealers where you can buy these things from, mm-hmm. Rolexes, for retail. 
but the wait lists are like one year, two years, and up. Mm -hmm. So people want to buy in the secondary market. On the secondary market, it's worth almost double right now. <sighs> almost double. About like it's eight thousand dollars more. Immediately, you get the Rolex yes. brand new, worn five days, right? And that is yeah. wild. So it's like I didn't even spend the money. I have it still. It's on my wrist now. You know what I mean? Like yeah, right. It, well, I could sell this back for just as much, if not more, right now, and I have the money. Honey so. was real big on whenever because he had a Rolex on it. Was a super nice watch, and I think he yeah. paid like, I want to say he paid like eighteen grand for it, mm -hmm. and he's like, this watch right now. Is worth twenty eight thousand dollars. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Probably he's even like, more now. He's like, this was, dude, this was ten years ago. Oh, it's definitely. Oh, well, fuck. do you know which watch, what kind of, which model it was? I, no, was, I I was broke as fuck at the time. It's probably worth so much. Drinking fucking hundred and fifty dollar scotch with him, and I had no clue what was going on in my life. I, just, <laughs> I was just hanging out with Ani, and he was telling me about. It. He's like, I won't buy anything like this unless it's an investment. Yeah. And at the time, it was easy to get stuff, so it being worth that much then, it's now it's so got to be. Now out of hand so the watch game has always fascinated me I'm not into them but it's always fascinated me because like it's another market full of it's it's a craftsmanship yeah it really is and, yeah and dude not only i want to talk about some other examples of these amazing investments this is like a, a legitimate investment but not only that but it is real quality like now that i've been wearing it i have other watches i've a lot of watches that are like cheaper this one i can wear all day long and it doesn't feel like I've been wearing a watch or other watches like after a couple hours I'm like okay I need to take this off I wear this all day every day and it's made me not want to look at my phone anymore I just look at my my wrist for a time like a like a grown ass man you know and, what I mean what's today's yeah. date oh it's the 16th right like that's a so grown nice. ass man you hear him fuck him yeah. <laughs> making us, he's convincing us to buy one too it's like yeah. where's your watch guy well, hook listen, us up that makes that's like that's like a gentleman's timepiece is yeah. like just like having a good suit and a nice pair of dress shoes and it's an investment. My my grandfather worked at PPG. He's a big watch guy. He had pocket watches. He had uh, that's watches, like everything. Pocket watch. Yeah. So yeah. was my, my, my dad's father. He was big on, he was an old Italian, big pocket watch guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're right. It is a gentleman. It is a very yeah. uh, gentlemanly quality. Like a staple. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. A staple and like a gentleman's. We don't gentleman. have a watch person around here. No, that, been, that's I why I that. asked like where, where you got it and, and the process because I don't know the process and... Mm -hmm. I, I need to be able to go look at things and like mm. try them on and, and know like, all right, this size face versus this size face. And you know what I mean? Yes. Like I, I need to know those things. I need to see them. So the, the, that's the tricky part right now is because they're not available for you to look at. Right. However, you can put yourself on the wait list and if it comes and you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. Right. Right. Um, but another difficult situation arises then is if you don't buy it, then going forward, okay, I want to, I want this one. Now they're going to be more hesitant. They might pass you up on the list. Mm -hmm. you know sure. I mean? But if you, as you develop a relationship with your dealer, they'll start to move you up faster and faster on the list. When we went, to, when Hannah and I went it. to Vegas last year, we were going, we were at all the watch stores, and they had, uh, uh, they everybody had something except Rolex. Yeah, all the stores were sold out of Rolexes. That they had, uh, uh, what's the starts with a P? Patek Philippe. Yep. That one. They had a few of those. Really? Oh, yeah. They had those, but it was at this crazy high-end watch store in Vegas. I want to yeah, talk about that one. They had, I mean, they were like, this is, these are yeah. heirlooms. These are fair family yes. heirlooms get passed down. They were $100,000 watches. Listen, there's one Patek Philippe. It was wild. It's called a Nautilus, and there's a specific a blue, blue dial, right? This watch, when it was in production, was about $30,000. They discontinued it. Now, this watch, if you buy it on the aftermarket, is six figures. 100, 200, and a specific model, $300,000 sometimes for this watch. They just came out with a Tiffany face of it, and it sold at an auction for like a million dollars. What? Holy shit. A million dollars. A fucking watch. A couple well, that's why, that's why OBJ had though. that one that was like 400 grand playing football at that. I'm like, yeah, that's just disrespectful. Like playing in a game with it. But like, I'm, see, whenever, yeah. whenever I was there uh, in Vegas and we were looking at them, because I've always wanted to. I don't know. I've always wanted one, but I just never did because I never really dress up to actually have one. But uh, the Hublots were cool. I like those a lot. And that store, that store was, they had all kinds of different stuff in there. But um, yeah, they're, they're fascinating. And yeah. it's a craftsmanship because whenever you watch people make it, you're like, how are you even doing that? Like a machine is not putting yeah. them together. No. no. They are put together by hand. Yeah. And yeah. 
You got to get one, man. You got to get one. Mm -mm. Why not? I, I, I don't. I mean, maybe when I'm older. I don't know. I, if I if I, I bought a if I bought a ten, fifteen, or twenty thousand dollar watch, I uh, I would be terrified. I'd be terrified to do something to it. Okay, I was feeling that way too, and then I got a little 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 ding in it, and I don't know when or how. And I was so upset at first, and now I'm like, you know what? It's a watch. I wear this. This is that's character. It's gonna be part of it. You can't you can't protect it. You can't. That's you what can't. and that's what stresses me out. Yeah. Because I'm pretty clumsy. Yeah, me <laughs> little, too. Too. A little rough. I bang my wrist on stuff. A little yeah. rough on stuff. Yeah. However, they're very durable. Like this is supposed to be like indestructible. Like the face of it. They're, you're oh, gonna yeah. get little marks and stuff. But and that's what the lady had said at the Hublot store. She said that she's like. Anytime the face gets dinged or any scratches or anything like it, you send it in. Yes. And I'm like, who the fuck am I sending my $20,000 watch to? She's like, sir, we have not lost a watch yet. We're not yeah. going to lose your watch. No. And I'm like, I might be the first. Like, I might send it away and it gets stuck <laughs> yeah. in a fucking hurricane or a tornado or something like that. Yeah. She's like, then we'll replace it. I'm like, how are you replacing it? She's like, because we're going to send you all of the information to send your watch. I'm like, okay, yeah. so what happens if it doesn't make it? This and she's like, it won't. Never has. Never happened. I'm like, you're just saying that so I buy the watch. <laughs> she's like, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to win with you. Okay. Yeah, right, too, you think. dickhead. The problem is when you send it in, like if I were to send this in, uh, it could be one, two, three, I don't know how many months until I get it back. Oh, yeah. Because it goes to Switzerland and they're going to, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, yeah. send it back to me. I don't want to go that long without it. The I need to have other ones first. The gentleman I met. Uh, Han and I, we've been looking at houses, and we went in, and he was walking us through, and he's an older gentleman. Um, he's retired, sold his business, and he was showing me the closet, and I looked in the closet, and there was all these watches in there in our case, and I'm like, this guy fucks hard. Yeah. He's like, this guy does really well. Yeah. But whenever you get to that, like with a collection of things, I'd imagine that things just become, you have your watch person, they yeah. handle everything for you. Like I'd imagine if something would need to happen with that, you'd take it to them. Because yeah. he even said, he's like, you into watches? I'm like, nope, I know people that are into them. Those look very nice. He's like, yeah. He's like, if you need anything, let me know. I hope you get a watch. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's exciting. I, dude, people who buy watches, I feel the way too now. I want to be. I want to help you guys get a watch. Like my coach at the fight saw that I had this Artem, the Russian, and he was like, oh, "I want to get the Rolex too," you know. And I'm like, "Dude, coach, I'll take you to the store. <laughs> we'll look for them. We'll, you know, I'll help you get a, on a list." It, you know, I want other people to have them too, you know. For sure. It, I mean, I I I've done it with Porsches essentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, well, like, it's really yes. Like I, when when someone like sees something that I own, or like they're like, "Wow, I really like the GT3. I really like the the older 911s." And I'm like, "Let let me help you." I was You're like, such I, and I, know. "I was like, I got ten guys I can message right now." I was like, "I got a guy in Texas right now that can find you anything you want." I got this guy up in New York City. He has literally anything you want. You're gonna pay forty percent more. You know, like I I just from like the little bit of talk I've had with Porsche Pittsburgh with just doing my own online research because I'm, I'm just fascinated with Porsche. I'm just fascinated by them. You can help me get one someday. For sure. I want one. hundred percent. Not right now, but I want, I do want one. Yeah. I see yeah. them all the time. Before they're, them. They're, it is the driver's car. I now understand I why Porsche one. people are Porsche people now that yeah. Bob goes through them all. Whenever you see <clears throat> like, I love, I'm into cars. I love them. Yeah. I find the good in anything, but whenever you see a Porsche, and then you see the intricacies, and yeah. then you drive in one. You realize why it is above a BMW, why it's above mm -hmm. a Mercedes, why why certain models are above certain other models, and why yeah. literally the king of a driving vehicle is a Porsche. Mm -hmm. The GT3 RS, like wild vehicle. Mm -hmm. The GT2 RS, not everybody. I'd probably say 99.9% .9 of the population should never own one. Mm -hmm. well, is that they the almost one should not in? be made. What's up? Was that the one you drove me in? Which one you drove me in a while ago? It was so fast. I Three. felt like I was on the road. That was the GT3. Yeah, my yeah. GT2 has seen 12 miles. Why? Uh, I bought it right before winter hit in November. Oh, okay. Um, it got dropped off here. I drove it home, and like weather went to shit literally a week so later. This car you're yeah. that one is. Yeah. It's, it is probably the, one of the fastest street cars on the road. Mm -hmm. Really, scary, yeah. hands down. Yeah, cool. yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a supercar eater. Like, you have a picture of it. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, 
I personally, even though Bob is a phenomenal driver, is into it, I'd personally have a hard time riding in it with someone else, given the fact of it's how light it is, how powerful it is, yeah. and how intense it is. Haunty. A little scary, right? Like I was scared in the car with that car, that's nothing. That's yeah. nothing. That is literally nothing. Honey is a very big yeah. Porsche guy, very big car guy. Had a Viper. Um, he bought, he customized a GT2 RS. Customized it, fully customized. How much was that? Over half a million dollars. Yeah. And um, he's like, he, and he's big on the track. Honey's out and he was out in San Jose. He lived there pretty much his whole life. Yeah. Would take his cars to the track. He had souped up Mustangs, like fucking wild Mustangs, an insane Viper. Um, and he had his GT2 RS. And he's like, dude, he's like, I ended up selling it because he was like, it was a little too much for me. He's like, I just, he's like, I, it was too much. Too much like he's scared he's going to like um, wreck or what? Not so much like, oh, I'm terrified. Oh, my God, yeah. I'm this. It's almost like uh, if you if you are not really into, um, he was into the track. He takes his cars yeah. to the track. And it was pretty much too much for the, the, the fun that he wanted to have That's in the crazy. vehicle. It That's is crazy. Bro, it's one of the wildest vehicles on the road. Oh, man, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Holy shit. Yeah, so it, it's, dude, it's it's an ignorant ride. What's the interior? Uh, it's all, it's like black and gunmetal suede with yellow stitching and like yellow nice. accents. Yeah. Um, but it's it fully customized by the owner of the Porsche dealer. Yeah. Yeah. They bought out on that one, huh? So like it <laughs> it got the person that owned it prior had a history of buying vehicles and then they just sit in his garage. Um it's a it's a twenty eighteen, I bought it in November. Um had three hundred miles on it. Wow. Or two hundred and fifty eight miles and I put on maybe fifteen. Um, but it had still the wrapping on the pedals, like everything that came from the factory. Like it's still, it still is now. Like I still yeah. left it on and it's just like, it's one of those things. Like it's such a weird vibe, but I, I drove it as soon as it got dropped off. You, you run out of road. Like it's so fast. Yeah. It gets up to speed so fast. You run out of road. Like you just, you can't even hammer it the way you want it to because the road conditions don't exist to be able to handle it other than being on a closed circuit track. Like that was the thing. And that's why, what, what, what I would imagine Hani was meaning by that. He's like, it was no, it wasn't, I don't think it was as fun because you would literally have to be trained to drive that vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that, that, that Porsche, um, the GT2 RS isn't the one they use on tracks. They mm -hmm. use the three. Mm -hmm. More or less. Yeah. Yep. Jeez, man. Yep. It's an insane car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, this this sounds like fanatical collection as well. Just like watch people. This is the same thing. Well, it, it is. Oh, like, wow. That's like doubt. in my head. It's it's the it's the largest investment piece I have. It's what I yeah. could sell for the most out of my entire collection. However, the 2011 uh, 911 I have is probably the best driving experience. Cause it's more of like the luxury driven. It's not so race car. Like the GT cars yeah. are race cars. They're I not they're super not comfortable. Bad. They're like a little bit rickety. Like they, they're yeah. built stiff for a track. Then the 911 is like the gentleman's car. Like that, that's my favorite one. Out of I want to, I want to check out the 911 sometime. Yeah. Cause I sure. still, I'm not like race car kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I like more of a luxury <laughs> they're, experience, they're, mm -hmm. but I love the way the Porsche looks. Mm -hmm. So I've never been, uh, I don't know, I, I didn't grow up with it, and I didn't, like, dream of envisioning, like, owning a collection of things like that. Yeah. But, like, Bob's, all of the things that you'll see with it, like, they're they're just, they're, it's wild. Like, whenever you go, you understand, like, why, they're, why they exist, why they're there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it is something that's, like, it's intriguing. Like, who wouldn't, who isn't amazed by something like that? Or it's like, man, this is, I don't know anything about it. Please tell me about it. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's. I mean, they're fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's and especially whenever you get certain pieces like a like a GT3, like you're like, oh, like first form sponsors. Uh, they do what kind of races are they? I guess like uh, like they're track races. Yeah, like big circuit racing. Yeah. So they and they sponsor Porsche is the, they sponsor a Porsche driver, mm -hmm. and it, it's a GT3 RS, mm -hmm. and it is oh, just it's wild. It is a they are race cars, mm -hmm. and then whenever you get to see one in person, you hear it fired up. You're like. This is a world that I have no clue. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think I think I think Andy or I think Sal has a GT2 RS. Yeah, I think he has a two that he brings out every now and then. Yeah, I know. I know Andy has a, a 918 Spider, which is one of the rarest Porsches in really? the world. Like they, the, right now, I just saw one go for 1.7 million, which is That's insane. Crazy. If like, you own one of those, do you even drive it? Andy does. Andy, 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 Andy does. Yeah. 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 You follow yeah. follow Priscilla. I mean, if you have that much money. To buy one of those, you're probably going to drive it, right? Well, Priscilla is a car collector. Uh, it's really cool. Like, he is, I mean, he's a pinnacle in our industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of, of, oh, within the fitness industry, of how he has built First Form with his team and everything they've done. A mm -hmm. um, lot of respect for the guy. A lot of people give him a lot of shit because he is hardcore, and that guy has a fucking fire that ain't yeah. nobody putting out. Mm -hmm. But he uh, he posts a lot about his cars. Like his his daily reside and all that things. Like he just he's loves cars. He's yeah. always been fascinated and people that've been following him forever. The dude was broke, going for broken oh nine. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then now he has how many cars do you think that dude has post? Probably a hundred. Easy, easy. Yeah, I mean cars. Yeah. Where's he Where's he storing them? Well, he just he lives in Ulysses S. Grant's house now, completely remodeled in Missouri. No way. Bro, I'm telling you, the dude is a fascinating character, and the dude earned every fucking penny that he got. Wow. A lot of respect for him, and he does a lot of really good things within our industry. And for uh, he does a lot of the things that we do, mm. like how we do uh, on a certain level for the people, like the charities. Um, and he does a lot of things for veterans. Dude's a bad motherfucker. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why whenever I talk about him with all the rides and all the extravagant shit he has, that motherfucker yeah. earned every penny. Mm -hmm. That's um, amazing. But yeah, he bought Ulysses S. Grant's house and completely remodeled it. And then he built a uh, a really, really nice garage, man cave, massive. It's like a compound. It's got to be like Walmart barn. size to put 100 cars in there, right? Like, I don't know if he has all 100 in there. No, he's got like, he's got like his select few at the house. I'd and probably say he he's did, probably 25 at this location. Yeah. yeah. He, he has yeah. other Jeez. facilities that yeah just, just storage facilities for yeah. cars. But yeah, he has a lot of uh, he has a Ford GT. Yep, which is you only get it if you're on a fucking list. Yep. Um, John Cena got in a ton of shit for selling his. You're not allowed to apparently. You're not allowed to. Oh yeah, if you get this vehicle, you're not allowed to sell it. It's yours. It's a contract. Yes. Contractually, you can't sell it. Pretty sure that's pro there's probably something wow. there. Yeah. 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 He's and but he has a ton of really cool cars. So following him, yeah. like follow his stories, everything he's doing, then you'll see. Uh, yeah. You'll he'll he'll post about him every now and then, um, and then like the interiors of him getting in, starting him up, all that. What's it? I'm gonna, how do I look this? Uh... Just Andy Frisella. Andy Frisella. Yeah. Sal has my dream vehicle. How do you spell his last name? Priscilla, oh. F R. He's here. Yeah, he's relatively popular. I'm gonna follow him. <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> a big deal. Yeah, he. Oh um, man, look at this Ferrari. I, oh. love, I love Ferraris. Ferrari's my dream car. The what? This white Ferrari he's got on here. Yeah, so he doesn't post uh, wow. anything like post. He, it's all in his stories. He posted this one. Man, he hasn't. There's no stories this today. One's, this one's super nice. Oh, recent. I mean, recent. Yeah, dude, he has no stories up right now. That's fucking hard to believe. They're hammering him because he's he has a very loud voice. He's hardcore. Uh, a, he's hardcore free thinker. Mm -hmm. Was well, Instagram like, I, is like I, uh, censoring him? Oh yeah, they yeah. censor me. Yeah, hardcore, and I haven't posted nearly that. as much as I used to about all this bullshit in the world. But he, they fucking yeah. hammer him. Yeah, that's such a weird. I mean, yeah, how he's is a, that even a thing. He's. He's a fascinating character, hmm. very fascinating person. Um, yeah, he's yep. Dresses really nice, yeah. likes his suits, three like pieces, um, nice cars. I'd imagine he has a watch collection. He just doesn't. There's no way that motherfucker doesn't have a watch collection. He definitely does. There's no fucking way. If he, he wears doesn't. suits, he definitely has a watch collection. Yep. Yeah. 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 Good dude too. He's a uh, he's. He's a good guy. Sal has, like I said, he has my dream vehicle. He has a square body. Uh, he has an old square body. That might, yep, yeah. get one. Yeah, it's a truck. But yeah, so well, this has been. We didn't even get into you two. Yeah, let's get Tristan, Tristan and in here. Tristan and Cody. So Tristan has worked for us for how long have you been here? 
Since June second of twenty twenty one. He knows the date. Very specific. <laughs> It's I remember the greatest day of his life. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Come on. I, I'm good with dates. <laughs> he is, actually. Big date He would guy. literally Big know our guy. dogs like birthdays and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he'd, like, he'd wake up and he'd be like, today's Henry's birthday. And we'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yep. yeah, uh, March 27th of 2003, we, we brought Henry home, so it's his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> How do the you Sambos know? is November 30th of 2010. I watched our dog give birth to him, so that's how I know. <laughs> He was the last dog That's of the true. litter, and I thought she was taking a shit because she didn't have the placenta thing or whatever. <laughs> it's crazy. I videotaped yeah. all of it. Yeah. Oh my god. We were talking about you guys were talking about skills. yeah you guys were talking about cars and watches and I'm sitting here like when are we gonna get back to talk about coming and farting like let's go <laughs> just waiting. We're cutting that out in the beginning. I've decided <laughs> that's not getting posted. Cody's gonna be like, oh, go listen to this podcast. Everybody's gonna hear, and that's gonna be the initial one. Yeah, listen, I literally had people after the first one, like old school teachers and stuff, who messaged me like, hey, yeah, really great podcast. Wish there wasn't so much swearing. I would show my kids. And I'm like, <laughs> Yep. Sorry. The beginning's man. getting then taken out. Then you started out. with that, and I'm like, oh, so anybody geez. that's wondering about what happened at the beginning, you're never gonna know. Nope. Never gonna know. We're taking it out. We, sure. we can tell you again, real quick. No, nope, not telling you. Taking it out of the beginning. We're gonna start. My, a lot of people might um, relate to that, though. No, I sure think they is. can relate. <laughs> they could relate if they were literally a fucking one hundredth of the population of the world. <laughs> I'm sure it happens a lot. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it yeah. never happens. That does not happen a lot. Yeah. That don't, never happens. Don't I don't know. Again, you eat like a Chipotle editing. and then like don't, that. What? Don't say it again. I don't feel like editing it out again. <laughs> I'm just, we'll just cut the beginning. Listen. Okay. Well, well nobody even knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to say is it has something to do with farting and that's it. My, my <laughs> cheek hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. I was dreading this morning. I'm like, we're about to do a podcast with these two. <laughs> and like hearing you two go back and forth in this office sometimes whenever he comes in might be the most ridiculous thing. Like he had, we had, uh, Lids was in here the one day. It was after these two were going back and forth and Lids was dying. She's like, how is this even real? Well, she'll laugh at anything. Though, how, you know? how, she laughs at <laughs> things true. I say and I know I'm not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, got, we got to talk about how Tristan said he was going to take Mike out in 20 seconds. Yeah. So in the office, yeah. uh, Mike is a scrappy motherfucker. He is Mike 6'6", 235, just a... Athletic. Fucking... Can we see Tristan's face right now while you're saying this? No, there's no is camera on me. <laughs> no, there's no camera on And Tristan came out to one day, and Tristan is one hell of a wrestler. Better than Cody, apparently. And... Uh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Did I say that? I heard him say internal yeah. events here. Yeah. I de- I've heard him say that he's better wrestler than Cody was. So I'm like, no shit. And that's where Mike heard, I don't think so. And Mike was like, I do not think you're a better wrestler than Cody. And Tristan's like, well, actually, I am. He's like, I can put you whoa. out. Whoa. And, whoa. Uh, whoa. Whoa. Time out here. I'm out here. And I, he said, yes, I am. And I could probably put you down within a minute. He's like, I could have you on your belly and choked out within a minute. And Mike's like, I don't know about all that. And he's like, actually, probably 20 seconds. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. He, I walked past his office, and he, like, did that at me. You know, oh. you, do that, you do that to Shane or anybody. They, like, you know, they jump and fall on the floor and hold themselves. I didn't move. <laughs> what the fuck is no that? No offense, Shane. That's what he said. That's what I he said. He says when I, he's like, when I do that to Shane, he fucking, he's all, you know, he flinches so hard. I didn't even fucking blink, okay? <laughs> so he was like, shit. Like, wow. Like, I thought you would have done that. I'm like, I'm always fucking ready. Okay. <laughs> and then somehow it got into, like, I might have said, like, just watch yourself or something like that. I don't know. And I said, it'll take me 20 seconds. And everybody in the office, some people agree. I cannot believe some people disagree. And I'm sitting here saying, listen, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to hurt him. Cody, you know, I have a particular set of skills and I don't want to hurt him. He's my boss. Mike was floored. He's like, he's like, you're going to hurt me. He's like, I don't want to hurt you. He's like, I'm going to go 100%. And Mike's like, well, I'm going to go 100%. He's like, I know. That's why I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you know how many times this story has played out like in, with wrestler versus non-wrestler? Oh, so, I can't even imagine. Uh, uh, one, one million times minimum. Like, yeah. I hear the story every week of guy who says, like, come on, dude. You couldn't take me down. And then wrestler goes okay, it's fine, I don't want to, and they badger and badger and badger, and then wrestler takes him down and chokes him out in like 20 seconds. 
It happens all the time. Yeah. It's that is a real yeah. thing. It really yeah. does happen. Yeah. Uh, usually when people are drinking, especially. Yeah. Dangerous. And like I kind of tried to reinforce that because like a bunch of people were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jay came out of his office and threw two 20s on the <laughs> yeah. floor in front of Tristan. Yeah. I wish we could just make this happen. Honestly, Tristan's very worried about losing his job here. It's okay. funny. It's, well, it's I mean, if I if he can't walk ever again because of me, then yeah. No, I'm even when we were on the job. phone yesterday, we I had Tristan call Shane, <laughs> some somewhat to be funny, just like have him do it for me instead of talking to Shane directly. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know, too too good for that now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just well, true. You know, yeah. you guys you guys understand. Yeah. Um, we get it, yeah. yeah you, guys get it. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. you get it. You guys uh-huh. get it. Um, Shane, so get I had... me a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I could use some. Uh, <laughs> so I have Tristan oh, it's call out. Shane. It's empty. Oh, oh, I took the last cup. Might be a splash in there. No, no, you can have it. You can have it. I've had two coffees already. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to be uh, tweaking out here. So I have Tristan call Shane. And ask him if we can push this back a little bit because I think I'm going to be late. And they're talking, and then all of a sudden in the background we hear Mike go, uh, "Hey, ask Tristan if he's uh, working today." Clearly joking. And Tristan's like, "Tell him I am. I am working." <laughs> and then even after after the whole dialogue, we get off the phone, and Tristan's like, "Hey, dude, you think uh, you don't think Mike was serious? Like, he, you think he realizes I'm, I am working, right?" I was like, "Well, he's obviously kidding." He's like. Okay, good because like I'm working. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> stop worrying so much. I know. You know what? It's I. I don't know what it is. The funniest is the facial expressions he makes whenever I uh, act like he doesn't do. Like when I bring up something like how oh Tristan, you told me that you don't you don't have to start working until noon like on on Wednesday. Or something. <laughs> I'll say it in front of you guys and they'll be like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> He's seriously worried about it. Yes, yeah, scares the fuck out of me. We just gotta tell Carly's not working then. I know. Meanwhile, Carly messages me like. Dude, Carly is about how how good of a job Tristan does, Mm -hmm. but don't tell him, you know. Yeah, seriously, she has me trained like a dog. I'm telling you, (laughs) she doesn't fucking like. If I do something, I could come with the cure to cancer, and she'd be like, "Well, somebody was going to do it eventually." (laughs) (laughs) I'd be like, "Thanks, thanks, Carly." That is real. (laughs) Yes, but we run a tight ship. Yeah, we run a tight ship because we're. Everybody's very task oriented to complete tasks for our customers and mm-hmm. for what we want to do and accomplish. And yeah. that's how it is. And that's why, I mean, I think that's a soft thing of today of like people not being able to take, uh, like take criticism. Mm-hmm. And it's not that like you're, I'm not saying that about him. Like, oh no, it's like, we like it's... to fuck with people. Like we like to joke around and bust balls because when it comes to it, we got to make yeah. sure like. Because it gets intense around here, and if you can't take yeah. a little ball busting, mm-hmm. like yeah. don't worry about it. We're good. Just do your job and shut the fuck up. All, and all then you got to give it. Like, and the thing is, he's giving it now, and some people are like, "Oh, you think you can fuck with me?" It's like, <laughs> I wasn't saying that, but actually, I am saying that <laughs> to the owner. Ah, t- Carly's you, you aimed high, didn't before. you? Huh? You aimed high at this company, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been talking shit on me for the last couple of days. I know. Yeah, I, I know. But it's I don't. So we don't hear Tristan. <laughs> we, we don't hear Tristan talk shit about Seth ever. Why is that, Tristan? Why do you never say anything to Seth? Uh, what is there to say? What do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, whenever is there something you want me to say, I know this still holds true. But whenever Tristan first started here, he was like, he's like, dude, I'm really happy with my job and stuff. He's like, I just don't want to screw up because. Seth scares the ever-loving shit out of me, and I don't want him to get mad at me. Oh, no. So when <laughs> I did the interview for this job, first off, Mike sat at the table with me, right? Uh, no is... fucking idea who he was. Like, <laughs> I thought he was just another worker. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, there no, it is. But yeah, Mike comes in and goes, uh, Tristan, because uh, you had lost your I voice. I laryngitis. So Mike comes in. Yeah, like, laryngitis. What'd you do? Oh, Suck a dick. Mike comes in and he's like, hey, uh. You lost your voice. Well, you've been sucking dick or what? <laughs> and Tristan's just like, what? <laughs> I remember that. Because yeah. we were talking to you I beforehand. And he's like, yeah, fucking bust his balls hard. And Mike's like, really? Should I do that? And he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were there and everything was cool. And I am obviously like, I'm not very familiar with bodybuilding. So when Seth walked in behind me, I knew he was the owner. But I, you know, 
I still don't really know exactly like, all about you. I don't really know everybody's personal details, right? But he just walked in behind me, and I was like, holy fuck, this guy's fucking big. Oh, my God. He's the owner. He's going <laughs> to fucking kill me. You know? And then Meanwhile, when you were— I'm not the one you should worry about. <laughs> you were sitting there, and I remember you were talking about how Carly trains us, and he's like, but listen, you will be trained— to not fuck up. And you were very serious. I'm like, dude, what if I do though? Like, like holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, there's this chance. There is yeah. a chance. No. Like, what the fuck? Carly made it. Carly has made it foolproof for people not to fuck up here. Yeah. Oh, she is. She is insane. She's amazing at her job. I will yes. say this. And I don't tell her this to her face because she doesn't tell me I do a good job. <laughs> to my face ever. No. I'll be damned if I'm telling her. <laughs> she is one, probably like she. I don't know how to explain it. She is very much like a coach. Like when we had wrestling and stuff, I'd say she's up there with one of the best coaches. I mean, she is on top of you, making sure you're doing good. If you're doing bad, she talks with you about what like you could do better. Man, for somebody that drinks so much tequila, she does so good. Yeah. I question whether she's working at the day or drinking tequila. <laughs> no, trust me, she isn't. I know. It's a joke. No, it's Tristan, and that's and Tristan she... does drink on the job though. Dude, no, I do not. <laughs> yes, he does. There was like maybe a couple times. Listen, one day it was during an AR release. Tristan and I in our family home we have a Jack and Jill bathroom, which means a bathroom that connects our two rooms. Yeah. One day I open the sliding door and Tristan's just standing in the bathroom. It's probably noon. Standing in the bathroom with a glass of whiskey and he just looks at me. I'm like, look at the whiskey. He's like, dude, bad day. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks back into his room. Because he was bombarded. It was his first ever AAR release, or was it the Black Friday situation? It was definitely Black Friday. Black Friday. Yeah. And he's literally drinking whiskey at noon. And he's there's like, literally, Dude. there are literally, there's over 10,000 fucking things to go through. And customer service gets hammered. Shipping is hammered. I, I wasn't hammered, to be fair. I was getting... <laughs> I didn't mean... I, didn't. I, I mean, I wasn't in my room, like, emailing customers back and be like, listen, just... I'm not doing exchanges right now. Like, fuck off. <laughs> you know? I'm not doing that. But I'm just drinking at the job. That's it get, well, it does, it does get stressful. And, you know, sometimes I did only have one glass. Cody will yeah. make it sound like I'm, I'm in there blackout sending emails to customers. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, I told him I was going to tell you guys. He's like, dude, what the fuck? No. I'm like, we, that's what we do. They do, too. Like, we all drink whiskey during the day. Like, it's okay. It's okay, bro. Yeah. I don't know if I'm there enough yet to do that He's stuff. Worried. That's all. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm worried. I want to do a good job. I don't want, yeah. you know, the bosses getting together and be like, we dude. We literally it's... buy a beer for our shipping crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's very, very concerned about no. losing this job. This is everything to him. <laughs> no, it's... This is literally his whole life. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> well, don't care well, no, I mean, we're, our, goal, our goal here is to create opportunity for everybody to continue their paths in their lives. Mm -hmm. Like, that's something that, I mean, Bob, me, Bob, Mike, and I discuss a, a lot about what we have here and how important it is to create something for our people and our community. Because yeah. me personally, like, I want to do really great things in our community. You don't do great, great things in your community without having great people. And nothing makes me more excited than people to excel at their lives and do great things for the community that they're a part of. So whenever our people go somewhere, like whenever the whenever people go out for the weekend, Nick goes out to Tequila Cowboy, the girls go out uh, for for a bachelorette party and they have Axe and Sledge and All-American Roughneck gear on, and then people recognize it, we're part of the community. Mm -hmm. They're running into people that purchase the items and yeah. they work here every day busting their ass for this for this company. So it's like whenever you have 50 employees and people see it, it's like, yeah, I would love to expand to have 100 employees. Well, if we have 100 employees, that means that those 50 employees are part of the beginning process of it that got bigger. So where are those people? Like, where does he hold weight in this company and customer service? So the next step is, is as we grow as a company, he's going to obviously aspire for more. So get into a better position. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that what we have here is pretty special. Even though it is intense, I would rather work here than anywhere else. I would not want to work for another company. Absolutely. What, what do you think about that, Tristan? I think it's – What are your thoughts? Well, it sums it up well. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is, too, is – Is there anything – could, could you have said anything better than that? Could you, you know how many you teams – Yeah, of course. Maybe. We'll, well see. Well, I mean, that. there's been how many teams that you and I have been on? Coaches, you know, leaders, teammates, and all that stuff. And, like, it's been a long fucking time since – being a part of, like it, I don't feel like I have a job. I feel like I'm a part of a team. You know what I mean? I don't look at coworkers. I look at like teammates. I guess that's how I look at it. 
Yeah. But I, and yeah, I've worked I've worked at places and wrestled at places where I'm like, dude, fuck this shit, man. This sucks. But there's never been a time, even like now, I'm super fucking busy with doing AR stuff. There's never a time I'm like, dude, fuck this. You know, fuck this. It's it's fuck Bob. You know, fuck his dumb idea. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that dumb shirt they came out with. Sometimes I look this, over at Nick and I'm like, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but it's nice. That's pretty funny. I'm, I'm very, uh, I think I'm very passionate about working here because it's just such an awesome environment. And I'm not, that's not me sucking anybody's dicks right now. Okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's be real. Now. I'm actually trying to kick the owner's ass. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. actually behind the scenes, there's yeah. about, there's about 10 people that are like fucking throwing hundreds of dollars at me to kick his ass. How much money would it take for us to organize that? And where does the money get I to? I have some money. <laughs> right now <laughs> where's the money going to jay literally came out of his office the and winner. threw money on the ground in front of tristan like the winner gets the money. Uh, so yeah. okay so you actually he said it, what, what pissed mike off what got him because mike mike's a scrappy motherfucker was whenever tristan was like yeah he's like i'd have you on your belly choked out within 20 seconds he's like he said he'd have me on my belly he didn't even call it my stomach like he's belly. overly confident about this yeah. <laughs> That's how this plays out, huh? I think so. I do. Mike, like, Mike was like, Tristan's very Tristan's very scrappy. Really? As well as being a good wrestler. M Mike you know. was, I think, most offended by the time frame. That, that's what he was. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't offended by you saying like, "Yeah, I, I could choke you out." It was a time frame. Yeah. He's like 20, 25 seconds. He's like, "Are you kidding?" He's like, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> like he he was very surprised, and I'm like, "Fuck!" Like. You were so confident in saying that that yeah. I was like, I believe him. I have a strong, I have, I have, I have a him, strong man. wrestling yeah. twelve month background. Yeah. I wrestled for twelve months. Right. <laughs> so even then, you could you could even understand a little bit better that if you've never wrestled or done anything like it, you have no idea. That was a joke. Twelve months. <laughs> so, twelve months. But uh, but I mean, yeah. I mean, I get it. Like wrestling is the strongest background. Like you fuck with a wrestler, yeah. you're like, God damn it, like. He's stronger than he probably should be. Yeah. He has really strong hands, wrists, forearm strength. Like, like yeah. you just, <clears throat> if you go to fight a fucking wrestler and dude just gets in a wrestling yeah. stance, you're like, God damn well, it. Well, yeah. Back to this old story of us going up to New York and visiting our friends, uh, Sonny and, and Jenna. Oh, my God. Sonny and his brother, big wrestlers. Yes. Right? And, and they knew, being from Western PA, big wrestling. Mm -hmm. So they... Their big thing is like like these two always got in fucking fights wherever they went they had each other's backs. Was and... it his younger or older brother? I want to say y younger. Yeah, his I don't younger wanna... brother was a scary fucking dude. Yeah, made me a little nervous. E either way, he he was like, if you see him take his shoes off, he's like, you better fucking watch out. And, I, and I'm like, I was like, What's up? I was like, like, what the fuck? I was like, take your shoes off. I was like, I'm keeping these fucking things on. I got traction. Like, what if I want to kick someone? Yeah, like, yeah. He's like, shoes come off, you better fucking be ready. And I'm like, so that's a thing. He's like, dude, he's like, we wrestle barefoot. He's like, or, or not wrestle barefoot, but like barefoot is just like. He, this dude was he, just a. I forget his reasoning or rationale, but he's like, dude, he's like. Yeah, I wonder why. He was, he was just, uh, he was a little rough. Yeah. All right. The dude, Squirrely as fuck. Yeah. It made me a little nervous because he was just, I don't want to say skittish like a dog, but like you knew the dude fought a lot. Yeah. yeah, and apparently the dude liked to fight barefoot. Like he was just he wore he was in his bare feet. I said, wore bare feet. Interesting. Just was always in his bare feet. And then they were like, dude, they were like, dude, if he was taking if he took his fucking shoes off, you knew that dude was gonna throw down and beat the ever loving fuck out of you. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And they're like, dude, we watched this guy take his shoes off during like before he got into a fight. Like he just was like, yeah, he was hammered. He was really fucking. And I uh, care. And someone yeah. just testing him, saying Always. this. Dude took his fucking shoes off. <laughs> they were outside. Dude took his shoes off outside of a outside of a bar or something. Took his shoes off, and everybody's like, "Fuck, dude, such and such." He just you're fucked, dude. That's such an unassuming. Dude took his shoes off and just beat the fuck out of this guy. And ever since then, it's been like, "Oh, if he takes his shoes off," and I'm like, "Man, this is like a fascinating trait to have." And they yeah. were like, "Dude." 
Yeah, well, like, like I, I, I would what are think, you thinking if you see that? You're I don't. Like, well, no, I know. If I'm on the I other end of that, just to scare the fuck out of people, because well, if somebody yeah. took their shoes off, I'd be like, God damn it! I'll be like, Fuck! He has a method that I am unaware of. <laughs> like he's taking his shoes off. Like I start running. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They, I'm like, really, and they were like, Yeah, dude, was smoked a ton of weed, but oh, he was a see. fucking. He, he made me nervous. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. I, I think probably most of us have something we would take off, right? Yeah. Like if I'm about to get in a fight, if you see me start taking my watch off, yeah. I'm ready to fight. Gonna, I've thought this through. Like if I were to get in a Rolex. fight, the first thing I'm doing is taking my watch off. Yeah. Like hand it to the person next to me. Well, I was at somewhere where I thought I might be about to get in a fight, and my mom was around. I watched. I watched. And I was good... about to. I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna hand this to my mom really quickly, and I have to fight this guy. Well, I wonder where that was. I don't know. But you were. You, there was times where I we were together that. at the hotel. Yeah. But that was. Tristan's that the voice of reason. Yeah, Tristan's yeah. girl. So something, something happened at this place, I love. It's called Wimber Hotel. Back in like New Year or November, yeah, Thanksgiving. This this woman that I absolutely despise, who torments my family, um, whenever she gets a chance. They they always come to this this uh, bar that I love, and I was finally there, whenever she was there. And so of course, you know, I had I, I had a moral obligation to uh, to do something. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I just, I did a couple things as I was leaving. Like what? I was just like, oh, I fuck you, you know. <laughs> and, uh, right in the face, too. Like, it yeah, wasn't like... like yeah. Oh, it wasn't from a distance. We're walking past them to go to the door, and he goes, boom, like that. <laughs> <laughs> boom. And I didn't see it, right? Yeah. And then we walk out, we're in the alley, and all I, all I hear is, Cody Law! Uh, and my girlfriend's with me, and she's like, oh, fuck. And then she's she walks the door, and I'm like, oh, I know it's about to go down. So I grab Kenzie. I'm like, Kenzie, stay here and watch. She's like, no, I'm going to go to the car. And then she that She ran over. to the car. She oh, ran dude, to the car went and jumped in the car and left us there to do our thing. Yeah, you raise your voice like one decibel higher than you're normally at. She freaks out. She's gone. Yeah, but She's yeah, gone. it was really funny. And I knew that Tristan, uh, Tristan doesn't love when I do that kind of stuff. And so I knew I had to, I had to do it in a certain Not way. No, so what I did I? was, when we all walked in, you know, I said "fuck you" or whatever, and I think they let that one go or something. And we were all sitting down. Tristan was like, "Okay, dude, come on, let's just." Let it go. Don't do anything. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And so then I knew. I was like, I had to let them leave first. So I was like, you guys ready to go? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So I had Tristan and Kenzie walk in front of me. Because I knew that if I was in front of them, Tristan would be like, dude, come on, stop. So once they were like already like halfway out the door, I was like, hey, fuck you. (laughs) Really didn't like that person, huh? No, and I'm not. I'm a nice person. Yeah, I I know you are. That's why I'm kind of shocked. You know, there's a few people that, you know, once you do enough things, if you mess with my family, I I have to, uh, I mean... If it was a guy, I just would have probably, you know, broken something off his head. Hmm. But it was a girl, so I just used my words. And that, that works too, you <laughs> know, gentleman. probably even better. Such a gentleman scholar thing to do. Yes. <laughs> not, that, not that she deserved it, but... Man. Yeah, she was talking so much shit, dude. Yeah, it didn't even make sense, too. The things she said, I was just like, oh, wow, you're the most unintelligent person I've ever had to interact with. She was talking shit when someone was holding her back. I know. You know what yeah, I mean? once once she was getting pulled away, then she had more to say. But I'm like, someone, well, the someone, things that I said were, were she'll never forget. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> these, oh. are, these are things that she, I'm, sure, I'm sure surely she's still thinking about. Oh, oh of course. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna see her. And like next time we see her, she's gonna be like a completely different person, looking wise. You know what I mean? Right. She's gonna have a shaved head and all that stuff. She's gonna look yeah. odd. Listen, we can say this. You guys don't know this woman. She's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> she's a fucking absolute piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, she said all that shit when someone was holding her back. If that person would have stopped holding her back, I'm sure she would have been like, wait a second, keep holding me back. We'll go. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? The further away she got, the more she had to say. I'm yeah. Like, then she turned to this guy, because we're in this back alleyway. So she turns to this random guy, because she's screaming at me from far away. She's like, oh, big tough MMA fighter, are you? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three but then quarters she of the population this, are very afraid of me. Yes. This random guy comes walking down the alleyway. A big beard, like kind of a big guy. And she looks at him and she goes, "He thinks he could beat you up too, big tough MMA guy." <laughs> and this guy goes, uh, "What?" Like, yeah, I, walks away right away. Kick I'm like, me out I'm of like, this. Yeah. He doesn't. I, I remember yelling. I go, "He doesn't want to fight me either, you stupid bitch." <laughs> and uh, it was it was amazing. He was, I enjoyed like, it so. Much. He was like, "You're right. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, want to. Like, he I wa- don't want to. He just he just I sat said, there. Good, good. I was. Thank you. I don't want to fight you. <clears throat> so I don't want to fight anybody, but some people, man." Circling back to Tristan taking Mike down. Yeah. There's no gentle way of doing that. Like, it's like, 
Yeah, like Mike should stretch is, before. Like, is that why oh, you're? Is that stretch, why you're dude. fearful? Mike should of, stretch. He should get warmed up. He should. Be, he better make amends with God before. <laughs> <laughs> be the last thing he does that's why i don't want to do it <laughs> there's only one mike today you can only yeah, go he said, he's, he's actually not, he's sick right now yeah. he texted me he's like because yeah. he got sick on uh he was supposed to be here he he was sick on saturday he got like he just got violently ill and started puking everywhere and he's like hey i'm puking again today i'm like fuck oh, you yeah so he's not doing well but we can still talk shit on him yeah yeah because yeah. <laughs> next time he's in here he ain't gonna say anything about it <laughs> We're show him the exact part. We're gonna make quite the highlight reel for him to watch from this podcast. <clears throat> You're gonna make it for him. Here, so listen. Uh, d- just to be strategic about it, give me a good, honest answer. I mean, the second I grab a hold of his legs, what is he gonna do? I mean, dude, this is gra- a wrestling match. This is what separates like wrestling from actually like fighting. Like, <clears throat> Mike's a scrappy fucking fighter. The dude's been in a ton of fights because just because he's a mean fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just pissed off teenagers, so the dude just got into a ton of fights. He went to Woody High. Like, Woody High is a fucking rough school, and he was a... He was... Rough. So, I mean, he's 6'6". He's a big fuck. That's why, I mean, like, he's not... I mean, he's not a wrestler, he's but six, I'm... He's 6'6"? He's tall. Yeah. His, wow, that's really tall, man. Yeah, yeah. He's long. He's... That's why, I mean, like, I him holding his arm out would just hold me there for about at least 50 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> But I do, I do like Mike. I feel like I'm sounding like I don't like him. I do. I'm just saying from my standpoint, and maybe Cody's too, it is very different. I know it's like fighting at bars and all that stuff. Sure, but when you get somebody who's been training it, like I'm not like the I'm not Kale Sanderson, right? I'm not, I'm not like the most accomplished wrestler of pretty all time. Pretty fucking good at wrestling, though. Yes, but that's the thing. You know what I mean? If I walked up He's to me. a college level pitcher in baseball <clears throat> and I was like, you couldn't fucking strike me out? Are you kidding me? I'd hit that. It's the same thing. It's a very mm. good analogy. That, that was a pretty good analogy. Yeah. I'm really good at it. Now that makes now that makes me a little a little nervous for Mike. Yeah. Because that makes a lot of sense. If you were to go up to a college NCAA pitcher and say, "I could definitely fuck," and you, there's no way you're striking me out within. You can't strike me out five times in a row. Well, Mike throws 96 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. I'm not hitting a 96 mile an hour fastball. Probably one out of a thousand times. No. No way. You know what I mean? I may not even get in front of that ball. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know yeah. how to hold a bat. And I, I can take double legs at 96 miles per hour, so imagine that. I mean, that's the scary part. <laughs> Whenever you see somebody who is very quick go at your legs, and if you don't know how to sprawl or you're not strong enough to if – you, if your sprawl is not stronger than his double leg, you're fucked. The best part about this whole conversation is that it will never happen. We're just – this is totally hypothetical. It's I never going to happen. It might happen because Mike was talking about bringing shorts in the one day. It, oh, it might. Shorts. It might because. Like, <laughs> shorts. <laughs> shorts. Me, dude. Bring knee pads. Put on whatever you fucking can to protect yourself. But I will say I don't want to do it because I honestly don't want to hurt him. I promise you. I know it sounds silly, but oh, God, it's going to be a nightmare if it actually happens. Well, I'm yeah, because like, it can be very unintentionally. He's very I, mean. He's, he's very rough. That's what I Tristan. mean. That's the, very rough. Yeah. yeah, you're scrappy fuck. I know. That's why I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It's fun talking have, shit, but I don't want to. Actually have you do guys it. wrestled recently? No. You too. No, but I know oh, wow. in wrestling, there's there's certain people who are very like, uh, very smooth and <laughs> they do mm. just enough. Like they can t- control you and will not hurt you. Where Tristan's more like, it's gonna hurt. You know, yeah. it's a little bit more rough. One speed. Yeah, like he's gonna throw legs in and hip in and put his forearm in the back of your head and you know. Oh, like when dude, we would wrestle yeah. when we were when we were uh, younger and stuff. Dude, I just I just, just thought of I like, just oh. thought of the three dudes that I wrestled in high school, whenever I was wrestling in ninth grade and like the different styles yeah. and like how one dude just loved rubbing his fucking head all over you. Yeah. And then the other guy just had crazy strong arms and he'd pull you in, like he'd start pulling you down. He had long arms, so he'd pull you in. Yeah. Like just diff- just little things that I know very little about, but like and then if somebody got on top of you and used their elbow, they they yeah. they're not dirty. <clears throat> But they're dirty. Yeah. <laughs> they just felt wrong. You're like, fuck, I am getting my ass kicked. Yeah. I've, I've never r- wrestled like that. So, like, I have no idea. My story is I was in ninth grade. I played ninth grade football. I went to Catholic school until eighth grade. So ninth grade, I was like, I want to play football. Played football. I was 180-some pounds, uh, like 84 pounds. After the season was over, the coaches were like, hey, 
you're a pretty good athlete. You should wrestle. And I'm like, hmm. Okay, they're like, how much do you weigh? I'm like, 184 pounds. They're like, you could make 167. And I'm like... 84 to 67? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they they <laughs> laughed. They said that. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And they, that's, how, that's how that occurred. They were like, you should wrestle. And I'm like, I have no clue what I'm doing. And they're like, we can teach you. They had no one at 167 at the time. So that's how I, uh, that was how I got introduced into wrestling. They and needed somebody at that weight class. They needed somebody at that weight class, and uh, and I said okay, and then I went to Kiski, and Kiski's was well known for wrestling. Yeah, they. I think they still are. They're I know top, some yes. people from Kiski. Yeah. Kiski and Franklin, Franklin top, Regional. Yeah, top notch mm-hmm. wrestling schools. So I mean, I was actually I had really good coaches, but the first match, I should wait for him to come back, but I just had no clue. I was just good at hitting people. Yeah, had no skill. I knew how to uh, throw a double leg. Single leg and a cradle. That was it. Oh, okay. Wow. That was those were the, that was my move was a cradle. Once I got you on the mat and I got on top of you, I could not throw a half in. I could not do it. I had no clue how to do it in the beginning. At by the end of the season, I got pretty good at it. Yeah. But I just knew how to do a cradle. That That's a it. pretty basic move. Yeah. Yeah. Very basic. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to be very strong to do it. Yeah. So that was my thing. Because you remember how that little bastard came in the other day, Pfeiffer's kid? Yeah. And he took me down, and then immediately, kid stuck his head right into my side. Mm -hmm. Five-year-old kid just dug his head right into my side and rolled me over. Oh, Pfeiffer's kid takes his kid to uh, Silent Victory. He was telling me about it. Bro, his his sons, all three of them, his two sons are, like, they are fucking murdering things right now. How old are they? Ten, eight, and five. Oh. See, I'm going to be going there a lot once I move here. I'll be uh, yeah. want to play. That's cool. I, I what, forgot. About I was that. telling Tristan like after wrestling, they did all that, but then my move was a double leg, a single leg, and then cradle. So after the, my first match that I ever wrestled was at uh, Elderton. So I was, this kid was a fucking long, lanky bastard, <clears throat> and the coaches told me they said uh, they were like. Just throw the double leg. This is this kid's first year wrestling. I'm like, what's my first year wrestling too? And they're like, you're going to be better than him. And I'm like, what do you fucking mean? Like, this is my first wrestling match ever, and you're telling me I'm better than my opponent. They're like, just go in, take the double leg, wind him up, put him in the cradle, pin the kid. I'm like, all right, so I'm super nervous. I go out there, and I'm like, this kid's long, lanky, and pretty slow. Yeah. So I go in, and I go to throw the double leg. Well, I just fucking pick him up and slam him on the mat. Picked him up, both feet come off the ground, slam him on the mat, and then they stop the match, and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? You can't do that. And coach is like, Seth, come here. They're like, dude, you can't pick him up. I'm like, he just came up. He didn't even sprawl out or anything. He just came up off the ground. They're like, just take the kid down, like pull him to the ground. (laughs) <laughs> go, go in there fucking pick him up again slam him on the ground they stop the match take points away and like seth do not throw a double leg just grab his hands and pull him to the ground i'm like oh okay so like that's a move too and they're like yeah and i'm like but, like what happens if that doesn't work and they're like it's gonna work so i'm like okay so i go in there pull him down get him on the ground give him a cradle and, and pin him and uh i was like so like we're gonna have to work on that and they're like yeah you can't pick people up and slam them I'm like, okay <laughs> But that was my introduction to wrestling, and it was a blast, but then I just I fell in, in love with lifting weights. I wish I yeah. would have stuck with it. Wish I would have. Especially at Kiski, because they just have a mm. phenomenal program. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I would imagine that you, he was probably slamming the kid like on your feet and not going down with him. Oh, yeah. No, I was on my feet. I didn't go down. So you're picking up and just slammed him like that. Yeah. yeah that's super illegal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, didn't, I didn't go down with him. I just picked. I yeah. didn't know what the. I, you no, know how course. nervous I was? It was my first match. And they're like, you know, this is his first year of wrestling. I'm like, I've never fucking been on a mat, bud. <laughs> never been here in my life. There's people putting full Nelsons, locking their hands, whatever. And he just. Boom, Brock Lesnar just slamming people. <laughs> That's exactly what occurred. And then, like, they take me. So I wrestled the guy that was 185, I think, was the weight class above me. And then the one below me was, I think, 158. I think that's how it went. So I'd wrestle between all those. Us, those three classes would wrestle in practice. And a couple of them were good, but I was just strong. I was yeah. just fucking strong. Definitely illegal. I've You don't really see too many kids that are first years, like, slamming, honestly. Oh, because I'm a coach, so, like, I... I've coached uh, a couple first years. I never see them slam. They usually like it's, they're just so goony to watch because they're still trying to figure out like positioning. Never seen a kid slam somebody. I'm super athletic. That's pretty good. 
even though it's super illegal, super good. I'm, I just, I'll never forget it. And then I, uh, I got my ass kicked by this one kid. His name was, uh, I can't remember if it was, I think it was Scott Hazlitt. And he was my age, and he was just a fucking animal with the weight class. I lost both tournaments to him. That was the only fucking matches I lost at the two tournaments. He kicked my ass at the Kiski tournament and then pinned me at the Shaler tournament, and that's why I took third. I was super pissed. Isn't it funny how you can remember people's names, like wrestlers' names, from when you were literally like in high school? Yeah, that's, that's fine. I'm going to have a rematch. Yeah. yeah, let's find him. Yeah, let's find yeah. him. He'd probably still kick my ass at wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> He probably went on to have a phenomenal career, go to college and wrestle. But yeah, I'll never forget because yeah. I got I, I I rarely got pinned, but he pinned me. Um, he pinned me at both tournaments, and then this other kid from Plum that was a fucking, he beat my ass too. You never forget these the people you lose to. No, and then there was a super hairy, strong kid from Indiana. I'll never forget weighing in, and this kid was fucking hairy, head to toe, full beard. And I'm like, bud, we're in ninth fucking grade. (laughs) How is it possible that you are so hairy? You look like Robin Williams. (laughs) I won. I won uh, by points, but I was just like, this kid is so hairy. How are you 167 pounds? Look at you. You look like a grown man. Ninth grade. That's crazy. Yeah. I should have kept wrestling. I feel like such an asshole for not. Oh, man. it It makes you hard. And, and a lot of good stories, too. So much suffering that you just, like, end up doing stupid stuff, and it's Look, funny. Looking back at it and knowing as much as I do about nutrition, supplementation, and training, I would hope that high schools uh, and colleges have excelled in those areas about making weight and, and weight cuts. But, I mean, it's still pretty tough because when you're a, you're, you're a child, you're well, a yeah. child trying to make weight. You know how difficult that is? You're fucking with hormones. It shouldn't and be. Shouldn't, shouldn't be. be. I, I think, made that mistake. I should be taller for sure. But I was cutting weight in like I eighth should be grade. too. And that definitely st- ever since I s- the first year I started cutting weight, I never grew another inch again. I believe it. Yeah. So I've been this height since fifteen. Kids shouldn't cut weight. And even the kids or not kids, I guess, but college guys, you should you should hear some of the fucking stories of the way they try to make weight. Like they have no concept of nutrition or sodium or anything. They're, one kid told me that, I that's remember, what I mean. Dude, I was there was a kid who was struggling to make weight. And he asked me for advice, and he was like, man, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm having, really having a hard time. Like, all I've been eating is, is celery and saltine crackers. I don't know why I can't lose weight. I'm like, celery and saltine crackers is what you're eating to make weight. Saltine crackers. Salt. Straight salt. You're just eating salt. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like well, that's, that's, that's not going to work. Why don't you eat something that's going to make you give you energy? It doesn't have salt, like a banana. I want you to banana. What are you eating, salty crap? Have a for? fucking sweet potato. This is craziness. It's just like, yeah. but they just have no idea. That's what I mean. The education portion of it. I mean, that's something that, uh, like, part of the community. Yeah. That whole thing is like being able to go somewhere and just help educate yeah. them, like yeah. teach them a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I got a really funny Dangerous story. Too. Adeline's one friend from high school or from from school. His name's Franklin, mm-hmm. and uh, he 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 was asking Adeline why we're sold out of creatine on our website. And I'm like, well, creatine's like the most fucking sought after supplement right now. But I was like, he's fucking 14. He doesn't need to be taking creatine. Mm -hmm. It's like, cut that fucking shit out. You don't need supplements. Take fucking protein, eat a fucking protein bar, train, and eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. So, uh, I was like, and she, and then he says, well, what's the best flavor I should get? And I'm like, just tell Franklin to shut the fuck up (laughs) and I'll send him something. And she's like, you tell him. I'm like, give me your phone then. So I went on her Snapchat thing, and I was like, Franklin, shut the fuck up. I'll send you some shit. <laughs> so <laughs> Shane and I put an order in. Nice. And it was t- I was like, I don't know Franklin's last name. So I was like, Franklin. <laughs> or he put in Franklin, and then he's like, what should the last name be? I'm like, I want a dickhead, you know, something like that. And <laughs> Shane put douche. So it showed up Franklin douche. <laughs> we sent him, like, homemade, uh, homemade, farm-fed protein bars, a shaker, a T-shirt. Yeah. And uh, he got the package yesterday, and his mom was like, Franklin, who sent this to you? He's like, oh, it was Adeline's dad. She's like, it says Franklin douche. Is he bullying you? (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, no, he sent me supplements. He likes me. (laughs) This is good. Mom, this is a good thing. They were dying. She's like, like, yeah, his mom was like, you're bullying him. (laughs) How old is this kid? Huh? How old is he? 14. Oh, he's, he's an 14 eighth grade. Year old, eighth 14 grade. Franklin Douche. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Listen, that could have been good. way worse. Oh, yeah. That I was, been like, way I was like, we, we were going to go hard. Name, yeah. We were going through every name sitting there. I guess douche is a pretty reasonable one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's not but, too bad. But his mom thought I was bullying him. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's like I'm actually sending him $200 in fucking product. <laughs> And all he I, was. All he I was. Ask in return is you let me call your son a douche. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, uh, I don't know. I want to go to high schools and see the kids wrestle, and you know, us having, you know, being who I am on social media. These kids, they listen to their coaches and they somewhat listen to their parents and everything. But always having an outside influence of reinforcing what these people are saying is always good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tristan, you know who I ran into uh, at the airport when I my fight? The, the, the Division Two Nationals were. In St. Louis, the same night as my fights, fifteen minutes apart. I don't. You know that Tristan? No. They had D two nationals in St. Louis, the same night as my fight. Oh. So my whole UPJ team was out there. No well, shit. Fifteen minutes away. Well, that makes sense to why you said I'll see you guys Saturday on Instagram. Oh yep. I was like, yep. what the fuck is he talking about? Here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was in the airport with the Shippensburg coach. He was there too. Shippensburg wrestling coach, and he introduced me to one of his wrestlers. He was like, "This is Tishon, Tishon, Tishon White." Oh fuck. Remember you. him? And I'm like. I do remember you. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I wrestled your brother at States. I'm like, yeah. Did you beat him? He's like, yeah. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I told him I was just kidding. Dude. But, but I first. wasn't. <laughs> that was my first match my sophomore year at States. He yeah. fucking tech falled me. Oh, but you placed higher than him. And though. I placed higher than him? <laughs> yeah. Because he said that. He was like, I beat him, but he placed higher than me. And I was like, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Well, we could be friends. Then. Maybe we should yeah. hit that kid up and he can train Mike on how to beat Tristan. Oh, come on. That was so long ago. Come on. <laughs> I've evolved. <laughs> he tech followed you, though? Dude, I don't, I don't know, know what it was, man. He just felt so different. He felt good. Like, he, he when I said, okay, that sounds weird. It sounded bad, but we uh, understood. I'm not it's feeling good. him. We're just talking about r- r- big, sweaty men in singlets wrestling. Well, these were small okay. men. These were 106 pounders. Cody knows Very what I mean small. when I say somebody feels good. Pounds. What? 106 pounds. You wrestled 106? My sophomore year, that yeah. That was 106, yeah. Jesus, God in heaven. How much do you weigh right now? Probably 162. Maybe a little too much. Oh, okay. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> oh, shit. How do you wrestle? Yeah. Uh, Adeline's 120. Man, I can't you, wait you to You should have seen him whenever he was young. He was you looked like big. you were going to die. No, yeah. I were. He was small. He was a small kid. Tristan was always way smaller than me until, I don't know. Yeah, like, dude. He, he was 160 pounds in high school, and I was 100, 108 because it was the two pound allowance. Yeah. You never grew again. Never. I got but smaller. We that, I'm 45 now. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, 106. Tristan was much funnier back then. If you guys knew him, he was even funnier because he had much less, uh, what's the restraint? He just did yeah. whatever he wanted. He would, even at Penn State, whenever, like, the culture was, we don't swear, we don't do bad things. Tristan was literally building giant, like, bigger than a human sized snow penises and posting them on his Instagram. And then the coaches yeah. would be like, hey, uh, what is this? You know? <laughs> Giant snow <laughs> dad, dude. What are we doing? And in high school, he was even funnier because he would like make these posts like making fun of popular girls who were super dramatic and they would, one post he made, they, there was like a hundred comments of all these popular girls just like attacking Tristan and Tristan was just like, too smart man. He was so funny. He would fire back <laughs> yeah. and he didn't get a shit man. He just didn't care. So you hold back so quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, now I do. I don't know why. I, maybe it's just like some anxiety or something. Older like, age. Yeah. Like if I make a post now and somebody's like, don't like your hair, like that, I think about that constantly. But back then I was like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? And he was 100 pounds too, so it was even funnier, you know? I know. He did whatever he wanted. I, I still have some of those pictures of your Instagram posts. Oh, I'd man. love to see them. <laughs> oh, dude, Can the, you show them? The one – oh, if I – I have to find this one, man. The one that you posted, like, Christmas Eve 2017. You posted a picture of yourself in a chair looking off to the distance, and you wrote this long, intricate caption about how I like my women, how, how he likes his women, and how he likes to sit properly, and all this yeah. hilarious shit for, like, a kid to be writing. I gotta try to find it. Really yeah, quick. and I only had sex one time before that post. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny. Please, God, let me have that saved. Well, we don't, need a, we don't need to read it now. I'm going to read it. Now? If I can find it, I'm going to read it. Oh, dude, people are going to not take me serious ever again. <laughs> I mean, it was. It sounds like a serious post. I, I, oh, please, wasn't. God, tell me I have this photo. Did you delete all these? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah are they yeah, archived? Yeah. I have. Uh, or did you just delete them? I think they're archived. I don't oh, know how know. to get them back, though. Oh, oh we can, I can show you how to get Yeah, back. we can get this back. Oh, I have so many. <sighs> it's probably required for the rest of the day, actually. I, I hit a point. It was like... Uh, Shane is your boss. <laughs> is he? Yeah, uh, technically. Technically. Indirectly. 
Directly. Te- technically, yeah, though. I feel like technically it would mean Carly is my boss. I don't think you're really my boss, Shane. That's why I say the things I do. <laughs> if you were my boss, I, I can't wouldn't. I say shit to that. I'm supporting it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, here's the here's the snow penis. <laughs> That's a that's a great snow I know, day. I know. Epic day. It took so long. Those balls, man. Dude, yeah. that's a huge you snow did a really penis. good job on that. You really How did you got build that? Was you that really alone? got in there. Well, we we took a photo off Google and uh, not of an actual snow penis, of an actual penis, and we sculpted it from that. Of course, dude, it's right, huge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that picture. We'll put it on the video for podcast. For oh now. yeah, gotcha. God, I have to find this this Instagram post though. It's so funny. <sighs> I know. On Christmas time, why can't I find it? You guys, as as a family. The law of family together has to be a little intense, correct? Yeah, kind of. I think we're just more like sometimes it's it's just loud. It's mass I chaos. I like your mom's reaction to it's you guys fighting. It's mass chaos. Mass yeah. chaos. Yeah. yeah. Your, your mom's it's reaction to you guys fighting is hilarious. Crazy. She well, doesn't like this? Well, my mom will like cry if we start to fight. Yeah. No, not do fighting, just like arguing. Oh, I don't or, know. Or like you show her something ridiculous. Her reaction is just priceless. <sighs> but there's just too many personalities. Yeah. You know, too many... It's craziness. In that house, yeah. Yeah, it's too you much. Know, we got just. I don't even know. I, you I want peace and so quiet, much. and you don't fucking get it. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> Six cats. We we at, well, we did have at one point three dogs. We're down to one now, but it was just it was just too much. You have six cats. I don't. Yeah. My mom well, listen. Does. What what happened was, cats were outlawed in the house. I, we were not allowed cats because my mom was deathly allergic to cats. I was also allergic to cats. I got one anyways. Didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Snuck it into my room, and it was up there. His name is Lucian, and he's the best cat in the world. <laughs> Love you dearly, Lucian, if you're listening to this. Um, and so my mom found out about him, and slowly he's allowed out of my room, and she starts to interact with him. Fast forward to, like, one year later, and she adopts five fucking cats. <laughs> what? Over the course of one year, I think, she adopted, like, five cats. No shit. Five more cats. Yeah. Yeah, I was cool with one, but apparently that wasn't enough. Six is a lot. And all of our allergies disappeared. Hmm. You when get used to it. Enough. I think your body does. Yeah, She's adapt. like the Brad Pitt and Angelie Jolie of that. cats. Yeah, she is. Because they she, do that with she, kids. She, if it wasn't for me telling her no, she would get more. She loves them. I know, dude. <laughs> she loves them. She started building, she literally started building like shelters outside and leaving them for the outside cats. Yeah. Like did. hoping that cats would come to the <laughs> Just so she could see them like on the video cameras we have and stuff. Right? It's snowing outside. She's like, I hope they get in there. I'm like, mom, yeah. they're dead. <laughs> yeah. They're done. They're gone. She's so worried about it. There's a million ways to die out there. They're not going to find this hole that you built. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know where the, fo- the post is, man. Is, you don't have that anymore? You don't have it at all? I don't think so. Come on. I don't know. He does. I, it was one of the funniest captions. Dude, I think it's stupid. That's why I took it down. What? It's not I, stupid? Are that's you why, me? like, the beginning of, like, last year, I was like, I need to take all this shit down. I'm 24 you now. You were wrong about that. Ah, dude, because also I was tra- I was talking to a chick who's now my girlfriend. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, ah, well, I'm going to take all this shit down so she doesn't know about me. So she doesn't know I'm a complete douchebag. <laughs> well. well. <laughs> Whoa. I think she does now. Like I wasn't going that far. But. Yeah, now she's like, fuck, man. If she, he would have just been like up front in the beginning. Now I'm stuck. That woman loves you. Ah, I know, and I love her too. Aw. Yeah. I have to be careful what I say, right? Because like, I can make jokes. I made a joke when we were talking with Martin and Keon were here. They're, you guys were like, I'm an ass guy, I'm an ass guy. And I'm over here like, I'm a tick guy, you know, because my girlfriend. And then, so I went to go get my hair cut <laughs> by my girlfriend's stepbrother's girlfriend. And my stepbro- uh, her stepbrother was there. And was like, yeah, I heard the podcast. Yeah, you said something about Kenzie and how you like tits. I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. So how, about, how about he was saying he was here the other day and he said oh, about going friends. to get his hair cut by his girlfriend's brother, stepsister, whatever it is. And he's like, I drove right through her front yard. <laughs> we had that snowstorm, yeah. and, like, you couldn't see shit. Uh-huh. So he's like, I've never been there before, so I just drove through where I thought the road was. And he's like, I almost got stuck. And they're like, yeah, because it was my front fucking yard. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm sure it's all right. Uh, oh, man. Man. You're an interesting man. Yeah. Me? Yeah. I don't think I am. I really don't. Yeah, you are. You know, he is. He is. I'm yeah. excited that, uh, yeah, we're, this is, this was great. Yeah, yeah was I great. wish I could 
I wish I could find the post. I mean, I have so we'll, much. We're to going to dig we'll, it up. We'll dig it up. There are uh-huh. things that I can't you legally know, share. Oddly enough, podcast. I told you this in the kitchen yesterday. I think it was right when I first started working here. Or maybe it had to have been. I was thinking, and I, and I was going through kind of learn, trying to learn the company. And I learned about the podcast. And I'm watching. And obviously, that was by the time Cody did it. And I, for some reason, I was thinking in my head, like, I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm going to get on that podcast and we're going to have Cody on there too. It's going to fucking happen. And I just really wanted it to happen for some reason. And here we fucking are. Here we are. Here yeah. We are. I, I knew it was going to happen somehow. Yep. And you also wrestling Mike one day. Yep. That, I don't that, think that's uh, gonna, now it's that, going to happen. Now that he is as confident as he is yeah. about this, like, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, I don't doubt that you're going to take Mike down and – Probably choke him out, but the twenty second thing is that's where I'm like, man, that's a that's a very quick period of that's time. So fast, but it's not. I think twenty seconds is kind of a long time. <laughs> One, I have it mapped two, out in my head exactly three, in the first five seconds, and then the like, next listen, five listen. seconds. Five. Okay, five seconds is a long time. Yeah. One, two, three. Take he's taken down already. Four, yeah, he's, he's down already. Five, six. He's going seven, to sleep. Eight, yep. Eight, he's nine, struggling. ten. 11, up. His life 12, flashes 12, before 12, his eyes. 13, his life 14, flashes before his eyes. 15, 16, <laughs> 17, He's in heaven right now. 18, God sending him back. 19, 20. Uh, he's awake. <laughs> so he might go unconscious and then wake back up within 20 seconds. Yeah. Dude. Yikes. That's fucking wild. See what I mean? Time is not really like 20 seconds is a long time. It really is. It's going to be a wild experience for him. Yeah. He's going to wake up and be like, guys. I was literally at the gates in heaven. <laughs> Did, I, send me back. Send me back. It was so nice. That's, uh, yeah, I dude, what if you heard him? That's so fucked. I would not, I would not <laughs> want to just because if I'm not stretched out. Dude, I stretch out for 15 minutes before my fucking functional workouts. Yeah. If I'm not stretched out... I'm hurting my, I'm getting hurt. Well, I know how shitty my shoulder mobility is. Like, if you manipulate my arms or my shoulder in any way, I will oh, yeah. blow it out my immediately. Rotator cuff gone. Oh, no. Gone. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mike's had three shoulder yeah. surgeries. Oh, jeez. Yep. Don't, don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. Oh, yeah. Rotator cuff, something, labrum, power half, tear his shoulder. Yep. In all seriousness, I don't want to, I don't want to do it, even yeah. if it was, you guys asked me to do it with Seth, Bob, or Shane. Like, I don't want to do it with anybody I work with. I really don't. You don't want to fuck anybody you work with. I, huh? What? <laughs> what he Not even Shane. Dude, like, fuck. That's a little weird. <laughs> no, wrestle. Fuck with. Maybe. Oh, I'm, dude. I. I, I mean, know. twenty seconds makes me nervous because I'm like, oh, like I don't know. Mm. Like, if there's a way, like you could safely like take me to the ground and guarantee no injury. I'd. I'd. Well, that's the, that's know. like he was saying, like the flow, like the flow of people, like yeah, their, depends how they're, on who you're gonna grab. Yeah, yeah. I'd have a feeling that guy. he is going to come at me very hard. Yeah, he has something to yeah. prove, man. You guys have really disrespected him with with your what's the word? Your doubt, lack of confidence. Like, yeah, yeah, lack but of if it was a random person on the street, I would. It. No, I'm not thinking about that. So we tell talked him about that. it all last night. No, we this did not. This morning he popped into my room before he left. Not true. I was like, dude, beginning of the I podcast, he said you didn't hear me. So, I got today. <laughs> it might be the day. Today might be it. I would never do that to anybody here. Yeah. Could you could you move Seth around on the ground pretty easily? Like uh, just being a larger man and yeah. So there's a twelve month uh, yeah, long background. I think I would. I would have to do different things because he's he's pretty large. I wouldn't be able to do like tight waist or a claw might be a little hard. So I might have to do other things. I don't mm. actually think you could get your arm even from here to here. No, I don't think I could either. That's, 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 the, that's the issue. It's too much uh, size there. Somebody was telling me that. Like, do you think feel... you would wrestle Seth on stuff? I'm like, here's the thing, dude. Like, I'd rather not because either way I'm going to hurt myself. Like, he's a big dude. I have dude. a feeling he'd be much more abrasive with me. Mm-hmm. Like, like d- dig his head into things. Like, yeah. like points that, I, that hurt absolutely everybody. Like, you get a head into the side to move, you're going to get moved. Like, you push on something put your hips into somebody a lot of pressure like another man putting his hips into you is very uncomfortable yeah, yeah that's what it, that's what that's like what he does best actually it's it's an uncomfortable like this does not feel right and he is violating me big hip guy yeah they're they're way stronger than you think it's wild like Only hips yep yeah. <clears throat> really double legs you know mike corsetti yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Really well. I went to high school with him. That's who we graduated together. Oh shit. Yeah, he went to UPJ. Thank God. Yeah, UPJ wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. does he does uh he does insurance and stuff now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really great guy. It's really good, man. Yeah, he had fucking banana hands. What banana hands. Yeah. What does that mean? Looks like He's a fucking a gorilla. gorilla's hand. Oh, okay. Like he was a hell of a wrestler. He was the same weight class as me in high school. But, like, he's been wrestling since he was four. I've been wrestling since I was in ninth grade. Mm-hmm. So, like, if he and I went in, like, we would we would fuck around, like, at parties together and hang out. And it was always, like, <clears throat> he was a phenomenal wrestler. I was just stronger than him. Mm-hmm. So, like, we'd go at it, and this dude's fucking hands would wrap all the way around my arm. Like, all the way around my wrist. And I'm like, dude, they're fucking huge hands. Yeah. And, like, I'd just be able to get away because I was stronger. But that dude's technicality would just ruin me mm-hmm. every time. Yeah, I'd like somehow guy. like wrap somebody up like not looking like I'd only go after him if he wasn't looking, mm-hmm. so I would win. <laughs> right, <laughs> that was it. But yeah, good dude. Yeah. What yeah. if like Seth just like locked you up first? Like like, would you be able to get out of it? Cradle. Oh, wind it up, man. I mean, if you're as if he's starting it up like squeezing as hard as he can, probably not. I'd have to. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking of scenarios. I don't know anything yeah. about the technique involved. Cool. So. so it's uh, it's just another thing that if you are very intense and perfect at the fundamentals, you're gonna be a fucking bitch to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be strong. You know, like just strength technique. is not. I mean, it helps, but it's not. Yeah. It doesn't have to use technique. So then you get somebody who is strong and has perfect technique, and then you're really yeah. fucked. Yeah. But some of the best guys I've felt have, are like not really strong. They're just really, like, really good at knowing where to be, you mm-hmm. know, with their bodies. They have really good control. Like, the best guy, like, I always felt like when I would wrestle with Kale, he always felt like he was using just enough strength. Just enough strength to win the position, but never more. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was never like, oh, he's too strong. He was always just strong enough mm-hmm. in every position. Literally one of the best wrestlers to ever walk the planet. Yeah. 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 You want to talk about efficiency. You know what I that's, mean? That's the word, man. Efficient. Very efficient. Like there was never anything extra on the. Have you ever table. watched wrestling? I mean, like not, at a high level. Not not in depth. Not like really looked at it and noticed it enough to. Pretty no. wild. Yeah. Watching what? It's tough if you watch inexperienced amateurs. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, oh, this is it. It's like watching you know high school football to college to professional. Mm-hmm. When you see like, fucking animals going at it, you're like, this is something that. I do not think yeah. I could be involved in. Yeah, like I, I, I'm not familiar with the pace of it, what it looks like. I just, I don't know. I've never matchups play a role. Yeah. Uh, styles play a role. Strengths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Takedown defense, like people that are just impossible to take down. So how the fuck are you gonna get them on the ground? How are you gonna win this match? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I know. I was wanting to get SJ involved. I asked Phil. The other day when he was yeah. here, I was like, "Hey, I was like, SJ is going to be two this summer." I was like, "When we get him involved in martial arts and like and some wrestling," and he's like, "At four. <laughs> and I'm like, "Really?" And he's like, "You can't teach a fucking two year old how to throw yeah. a roundhouse kick button." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Well, I just thought maybe like I get ahead of the ball." He's like, four, Seth. <laughs> Keep him in the gymnastics, yeah. doing all the stuff, being active." But at four. So two more years. I'm like, four is ahead of the, ahead of the ball. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay, Phil. You got more than enough time. I was like, I just, you know, thought he might learn early. Yeah, yeah he's right. That's cool. But gentlemen, this has been one hell of a podcast. I yeah. think everybody will enjoy the. They're also going to have many questions for you, Tristan. They're yeah. going to wonder why you haven't spoken up earlier. But they know the intimidation factor is strong here with me. I feel confident about that. I just have a look. True. Not so much a skill. Yes. But, uh, Cody, congratulations with everything that you're doing. This is yes. phenomenal. We couldn't be more happy. Everybody here, everybody that follows us is super pumped about everything. It's very fun to watch. Dude. It is. Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's cool to be in the presence of somebody who has uh, uh, such passion and ambition for life. Mm-hmm. So if there's any, everybody listening, that's something, that's a huge reason why you should follow uh, and just be a part of this journey. It is awesome. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, yeah. thank you. Everybody listen to make sure you continue to be good motherfuckers. See Bye, everybody. <laughs>